Marco. Marco. All right, everyone. It's that time. You've been waiting patiently, and I appreciate it. We're finally here. The time has finally come. We're live. And uh, this is a special one. It's been a long time. It's been a very long time, actually, since I have done a debate on this channel or whatever. And uh, some of you guys, this is your first time watching me. Some of you guys have seen me before, maybe back in 2021. And uh, I stopped doing this content for a year, 2022. I didn't do any anti-MLM content, um, but I'm back. I still realize that there's more work to do. And uh, I have a renewed optimism about what this community can do. So I'm not going to waste your time. I'm going to get right to it. All I'm going to say is I would just ask that you guys keep it respectful. Uh, be the change you wish to see in the world in, in the chat. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to, you know, I think things are only going to get solved and move forward by people being, uh, you know, having common ground and being respectful and hearing each other. So that's what I intend to do with this. And I'm only going to say this once. Please click like on the stream. It's free to do. And I hate to be that YouTuber that says, hey, guys, click the thumbs up and subscribe. But I will say on live streams, it does genuinely help notify people that I'm live. So, yes. And uh, all the super chats and all the donations are very much appreciated. I, I thank you guys for the support. Uh, much love. And what else? There was one other thing that I was intending on saying here before we get started. Thumbs up the stream. Be respectful. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Thumbs up the stream. Thumbs up the stream. Support. I will not be having the super chats pop up on the screen because I'm trying to be respectful to our guest and, and uh, not have my attention divided. So uh, apologies if I'm not like reading the chat or whatever. Um, but yeah, appreciate all you guys. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Thank you to my fellow creators in this space for doing the, you know, a couple of you guys did live streams prior to this, leading up to this, and shared my Instagram posts and whatnot about it. I really appreciate it. There's already 400 people watching, and we haven't even really started yet. So without further ado, I'm going to give our guest an opportunity to introduce himself. Um, Dominic, if you would like to unmute your mic, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dominic Izzo. How are you? Thanks for having me, Mark. I appreciate my, that. My pleasure. Thank you. There you go. All right, so I just wanted to start off. Some of the people probably don't know you. Some of the people watching, probably this is their first time watching me as well. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your personal background and what got you started um, with the content you make and with the industry that you're in. Yeah, well, we're going to get into this. This is going to be a good, uh, good this will be a good chat. Um, my name is Dominic Izzo. I'm a retired police officer from out here in the Chicago area. I am an entrepreneur, uh, radio host, podcast host, uh, published author, cigar entrepreneur, network marketer, martial arts expert, gym owner. Um, I, uh, in the network marketing space where we're going tonight, that's one of my biggest passions. Uh, and we can get into my history. We can get into everything that we disagree with and we agree with. Um, I'm going to let you fundamentally lead this conversation today. I think that's important. Uh, I'm a guest in your house, so I thank you for that. And uh, we're going to go whatever direction you want to go. Um, I think that we should clear up first, what, what is our objective for the conversation today? What do we want to achieve in totality and then separately? What are, what, are, what are we looking at? I'll let you go ahead first. You are the guest. Well, I think for objectively, I think we need to find, we're not going to find a common ground, right? Because you're oh, going to die on your hill. And I was going to say to find common ground. <laughs> No, I, well, I don't, I don't think there really is. I mean, there's established common ground, and I've had that with many people in the anti-MLM movement. But okay. I think that my position is, you know, I know that uh, based out of your audience, it's a moot point to come to change minds. That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. The only thing that I can do is I can put a position out for anybody who is watching that is pro-MLM to see that we have a problem. We need to address this problem to look at from our lens what the problem is as uh, as stated from the other side, your side, fix those problems and moving forward. So I, if, if common ground is going to be already established, your content is anti-MLM. And that yeah. means that we have a problem fundamentally. So we've, we've already established common ground. But when it comes down to the debate purpose, you know, uh, intent wise, you know, I, I don't know what your intent is from this, but my intent is to actually continue to try to put some education, a massive amount of education in the network marketing industry if we're going to move forward. 
Well, I guess for me, what I mean by common ground is you mentioned that there are some things in the industry that you would like change. There are some things that you don't like about it. Is that fair to say? As tactics, 100% tactics I don't care for at all. So, so I'm guessing we would agree on those tactics, and that's sort of what I mean by common ground. I think if we start from a place of mutual agreement, that'll probably uh, be a productive place to start because we have um, mutual dislikes about the industry. Is that fair to say? Yes, both, both sides of the industry have an extreme uh, uh, anti and pro, and they're extreme. And both of those sides are completely corrupting any good that would be done from this industry. And that would, that's what needs to be called out. Well, don't let me um, sway your momentum here. Please elaborate on what the and issues are. Tons of momentum. Go where, whatever direction you want to go. Like I said, this is your chat. So appreciate that. So what are your issues basically with the multi-level marketing industry? And I also, I think we should define our terms and agree on the words we're using because one of my issues is I find that the network marketing, I'm going to say multi-level marketing industry misappropriates language so much that even when it comes to trying to simply have a conversation about the industry, they end up using words to describe a whole, a wholly different thing. Like, you know what I'm talking about. We're direct selling. We're network marketing. We're direct sales. We're, and they sort of use all these words as synonyms for each other when they are actually different things. So, uh, let's, yeah. yeah, let's, let's define those. Let, we, let's define those for right now. So I've, I've got some definitions and I hope this doesn't mess up my screen because I, you and I talked about this, that you were going to bring this up, that there's a difference between network marketing and MLM. I believe in so. My, okay. So in, uh, the, the Google search, the multi-level marketing is the practice of selling goods or services on behalf of a company in a system whereby participants receive commission as their sales, as well as the sales of any participants they recruit. That's going to be established. Do you disagree with that? Or, I mean, I have no issue with that. Did definition. you say that was the definition for network marketing? Multi-level marketing. Is the source that you're reading that from the FTC? The source I'm reading that is a simple Google search. First thing that pops up. Right. But does it, does it say the website that it comes from on Google? It's Google's definition, dictionary. Ah, Oxford. I see. So, of course, the official definition, I wouldn't dispute. However, like many things in the industry, on paper, they may say one thing, but in actuality, I think they are operating in a different way. And so I look at that definition on Google sort of, sort of as the MLM's des description of themselves. Explain that. So how do you how do you derive that? If that's what the definition is, how are you, are you making it to fit a narrative for what you need? Explain that to me. No, quite the opposite. In fact, I find that it's people who are in the network, sorry, multi-level marketing industry who... We got to differentiate the two. So Okay, so here's what I'll do. There was a video you did where you reacted on your channel. Uh, Dominic Izzo, the bull of MLM, Network Marketing Warfare is your channel. You guys can subscribe to that if you like what Dominic has to say. Um, on, there was a video you reacted to of mine where I interviewed a fellow anti MLM creator named Aaron. And in that video, you were talking about how network marketing is essentially something everybody in the anti MLM community does because we market to our network using things like affiliate links. You mentioned, you, you've pointed out examples in other videos of yours of how uh, women in this space might have a link in their bio for for people to go buy something off of a wish list or some affiliate link that they might get a small commission out of. And f in your own words, you've said something along the lines of, this is network marketing. They are marketing to their network. If we're going to use that definition, then I would agree. If we're going to define it based on basically sounding it out and reading the words. So if we're going to stick to that logic, then doesn't multi-level marketing have to mean something different? I would assume so. Yeah, but the definition is multi-levels to the marketing, of course. Right, so, so I just want us to agree that multi-level marketing and well, network gonna, marketing are not euphemistic. Yeah. We're going to fit in definitions for whatever, and I know where you're going with this, and you're right. There is, there's always going to be the semantics game for what they're using for this. Right. We're not, I'm not going to dispute that with you. Go, yeah. Okay, so, so 
Because I want us to agree that multi-level marketing and network marketing are different things because I've seen many people, many creators in the pro MLM space do this thing where they say, you know, it's the same. It's, you know, they'll, they'll sort of twist the language. They'll say, well, it's just like franchising. It's just like network marketing. It's just like direct sales. It's just like affiliate marketing. Are there, and it's, it's are not, there similarities? Pardon me? Are there similarities? Of course there are similarities, but that doesn't mean they're the same. No, I, that's, I understand that. So which are you attacking? What what are you going after? So your position is anti-MLM, right? Anti-multi-level marketing. Antithesis. So we're gonna say, we'll stick with that definition. And the yes. definition is, as I read, which is a practice of selling or serving uh, goods on behalf of a company in a system whereby participants receive commission on their sales, as well as the sales of any participants they recruit. So Correct. that's what we want to look at. We want yes, to look yes. at selling and recruiting. Okay. So the problem in that definition is that multi-level marketing companies tend to report sales to the government when they pay taxes or whatever, when actually those sales, th that word is sort of a lie. The use of the word sales is sort of a lie because we've seen time and time again, and I think this is maybe one of the issues you might have with the industry. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't want to put words in your mouth. But if the sales are only coming from the people within the company who have signed up to be a recruiter, uh, a distributor rather, but effectively a recruiter if, through duplication and whatnot, if the money that the company generates, if the revenue that they report is the revenue that uh, Bob and Emily and Sarah paid to buy the starter kit, that's not sales to an outside network of customers out in the world who actually desire the product and have gone out to now buy it and sought it out. I would also argue that those people who then sell it to their friends and family who may not sign up, but they just buy it to support their loved one who's now doing this business. I, I would also argue that that is not genuine selling. That's not really sales to an outside market. We, we, uh, we're going to talk a lot about sales and where the industry's gone at. You also have to separate the two things. You have the company, the corporate. What's their objective? Their objective is to get their product sold, right? I'm not a service guy. Um, I was in one network market. And, you know, we should – we need to establish a foundation of, of – where we're coming from first, right? So okay, yeah, I've been sure. involved with network marketing since uh, the January of 2012. Uh, I was a, a gym owner, a police officer at the time. Um, I was renting space out of a, a gym where I spent $500 a month before I owned my gym to teach my classes. And I got worn down. The guy who brought me in flat out said, you know, if you, if you watch my uh, presentation, and this was back when we were doing living room presentations and flip chart presentations, he hounded me for months and then finally said, I will give you a month off of your rent, $500, if you wind up watching this and joining my business. $500, that's, that's a deal and a half. Watched it. I did join 100%. I got just fish hooked in on the get rich quick. Did that, all, that, just, that appealed to me so fast. And it kind of triggered something that where I remember back when I was 18, 19, working in retail, that, my God, people came after me for Amway all the time because of my personality and sales skills, and I just didn't do it. Um, I was in the, co the first company I was with, and I won't say – it's very easy to find out what company I'm with, but I don't want to – that's not – I don't want to represent the company today. I'm representing my thoughts. I was with them from 2012 until 2018 and was very successful in selling the product. Could not recruit worth a damn could not do it, but the product was just extremely easy to sell. Plus, I was involved with a very good upline that was based off of education. I wanted to understand the network marketing industry, the MLM, multi-level marketing industry. And I'm probably going to, I personally will interchange those terms throughout the, this conversation. That's just a part of my speech. Um, and I saw these people who were, they, they were making these claims of unbelievable financial wealth just based off of a system. But every single damn presentation I went to, you heard the same thing from the people who were presenting them. Just show the plan to two people a day. Show the plan to two people a day. Right? And I got so frustrated because I am very much anal uh, uh, analysis paralysis. How did you wind up talking to people? Did you stop them in the grocery store? What time of day did you call? I couldn't get the minutia for everything that I needed. Long and the short of the story is I left the first company I was with because back then, I have a very big social media presence on certain platforms, and the corporate had sent me a message saying it's an unfair advantage that you're promoting you know, your business on your social media. So that was before the days where they embraced social media. So I said, all right, I'm going to take a step back from this. I got involved with a, um, 
another company that was uh, the electric bill changeover. Um, and that was where I got the first taste of the scumbagness, where the person I got in was all hype, all sensationalism. The first three-way call that I did with him was he was on the line with the guy saying, well, you don't want to get rich quick? Why don't you want to get rich quick? And he was just you know, manipulating him. And for me, because I had integrity coming from a law enforcement background, it bothered the living shit out of me. Sorry if you don't remember my language. Um, You're good. I didn't, I didn't appreciate that, right? So and, and the, the second time that wanted red flag for me, and I was with him for six months, was we had to get these people's social security numbers into uh, their, the process. And that's one of the hardest things to do. You're like, yeah, let's join up for this business. Why do you need my social security number? It's just not something that everybody feels comfortable with. So when it comes down to that transaction being done, and I would say, hey, so-and-so, this person doesn't want to give their, their social security number. Well, just make one up. Just put one in there. When I saw that unethical behavior, I got, I left immediately, was done for that. Took some time off. Um, I had a friend on social media who we were always aligned politically. And one day she puts up after, you know, her and I for a couple of years were friends and she puts up the guy that she's dating online and he's Johnny Douchebag, California surfer tan tattoos. You know, he's got a flat brim hat on, pulled up over his ears, wearing an affliction shirt. And I'm like, who is this clown like that she's him. dealing with? Oh, yeah. Well, so then I researched him, and it turns out he's a seven-figure earner in network marketing. So I, had, I asked. I said, listen, I'm in this space still. I said, I don't understand this industry, and I would like to have a conversation with this man. Can I talk to him? He did. He gave me 90 minutes of his time, and he explained what finally made sense to network marketing for me. Now, he explained it in the conversation, which took me a few months to understand. And in the concept of everything, I had to separate the two. Because I didn't understand the intangible, well, what do you mean we're just transferring product from corporate to you and there's no middleman and this and that. And I had to look at a couple different factors. I had to look at the fact that from a business owner standpoint, and I got this after I owned a gym. After I owned a gym, the biggest expense was marketing and advertising. You, know, you, you spend $30,000 to send out flyers for one month. And you understand the concept of foldable garbage, how people don't wind up seeing your flyer until the seventh time that it comes into your mailbox. All this, you hope for a 1% to 3% return on investment. When I started looking at network marketing, and that removes the, the aspect of the front end loading on the, uh, the uh, uh, marketing, meaning that people, they don't, network marketing companies don't pay for advertising. We're the advertising, so theoretically, every single dollar they bring in is going to be profit for them, and they're paying people out of that what comes in. When I saw that firsthand, I went, okay, that makes more sense to me. I looked at um, the, uh, the, the, the corporate separation where corporate, all, all and I, I don't, I, I've experienced it with almost all of them, except for my uplines with the company that I returned to, corporate has a revolving door policy. The amount of lack of training that any, any MLM, network marketing companies provide is moot. It, it's so minimal, it's nauseating. It's hype, it's sensationalism. To go back to it, um, again, every presentation from every multi-million dollar earner, right? The guys who are making $250,000, $300,000 a month say the exact same thing. Be teachable, be duplicatable, just show two people the plan a day. And within that space leaves so many variables that no one is teaching that I had to sit there and take a step back and look at what this was, which was sales. So the second I learned that there's a separation between the people who are out there that are not being trained properly and the fundamental goal of the corporations, which is to sell, to be honest, corporate doesn't care if you come in at a package and you pay your $100 entry fee, your $250 entry fee, your $50 fee, and then you wind up uh, making that purchase, that is still a transaction for corporate that goes in their books. So while the people underneath it may not view it, it's a revolving door. There's never going to be a shortage of people who try this industry. That's one of the things that I really need to look at. We need to discern better coming in, and people need to discern better recruiting. So the separation of those who are actually doing the selling and the recruiting from corporate and corporate's intentions, those are two different things that we need to, we need to point out off the bat. So could I summarize all of that by just saying transparency is the issue you have with the company? A hundred percent. One hundred percent. Okay, because I do agree. I think that the recruiting tactics are wholly deceptive. I don't think, I mean, we're going to talk about this as well, because you made an Instagram post uh, ahead of this where you, I think, suggested that 
perhaps I wasn't qualified to talk about multi-level marketing because I had never been in an, a multi-level marketing company myself. And to that, I will say, I, I don't think that's necessary. You know, I don't think that any archaeologist who has a degree in archaeology has ever met a dinosaur in real life, and yet they are still considered to be experts. Uh, you know, I don't think every doctor who treats cancer patients has had to have cancer in order to understand. Also, if I were to debate a doctor, should I be a versed in medical school? Depends on what you're debating about, I suppose. Okay. Right. So again, so what is your intent? So we have to go back to that. Well, no, hold on. Let, me, let me finish. Let what me are finish. your qualifications and your intent for this? Well, let me finish the, what the, back, the. What's your background with the horror of MLM? Yeah. So what I was saying before, just because I don't want to lose my train of thought, is I don't. I don't think I have to have been in it in order to have an opinion on it. Um, also, when it comes to experience in MLM. A lot of people, they might be in one or two or maybe even three or maybe even more MLMs. A lot of people I talk to, they have been in one MLM and that one experience burned them bad enough that they didn't foray into it again. When it comes to experience in an MLM, I have probably attended more multi-level marketing trainings than most people, whether they were in an MLM or not. By virtue of just the work I do, I have spent literally innumerable hours sitting, whether in person or on Zoom or on a fake account on Instagram, talking to some recruiter, I have, trust me, I, I could give you so uh, to, an MLM pitch presentation at, right now. So let me just say, oh, so to, uh, pardon me? You have to look at intent and application then. Did you so, yeah, go into so these I, trainings? I, did you go into the trainings to learn or to find flaws? And then did you apply the training? It's not that I went looking for flaws. The flaws present themselves because they are so ludicrous. And thankfully, I have attended these meetings when I have not been in a precarious financial predicament or I've not been emotionally vulnerable. And so I think I was able to, you know, I had my faculties about me the very first time. And this segues perfectly into me talking about my background. You you uh, shared with us what your background is and your introduction to this industry. The gentleman offered you a month's free rent at your gym if you joined his company. We'll come back to that, of course. For myself, I was 19 and my best friend from high school, smartest person I knew, told me that he was now a financial advisor. He was a broker with a financial services company. And I was greatly impressed and I believed him because he was the guy who I would cheat on his using his math homework because I sucked at math and I would cheat and he would help me and he would even help me cheat on tests in school. We were best friends, best friends. And after high school, when he told me about this, I think I was working for my dad at his restaurant at the time. I was just doing, you know, 19 year old job behavior stuff. And uh, he invited me to his office to, exp you know, see what this was all about. And I had never heard of an MLM before. I had never heard of a pyramid scheme. And I went there and I saw the presentation from this company called World Financial Group. And I saw one guy go up and tell a rags to riches story about being born on a dirt floor in Mexico. And now he has a Bentley. <laughs> then, he, then everyone clapped. There was also, I noticed, in the audience, interspersed with the people being presented, there were people that were actually part of it who were like sort of plants in the audience, clapping and cheering and answering the questions and creating this atmosphere. And then the next guy went up and did the same thing. And then the final boss went up and told the craziest rags to riches story and basically laid it out and said, you could have this too. And we go on trips and here's me in the Bahamas, etc. And during this experience, I felt something was wrong. And I think it's probably because um, in the community I grew up in, uh, there's a lot of people who are less than forthcoming when it comes to business opportunities, okay? So I won't get into that. But I sensed something was off. I smelled it. You can't bullshit a bullshitter, as they say. And I looked up the company on my phone just while I was sitting there. And I saw a litany of negative sentiments from people, bad reviews, etc. And I just sort of put my face in my hands. And I was like, oh, my God, my friend has been tricked in some way. And afterwards, the presentation was over. He and another gentleman about his same age, our age, came up to me. But when my friend came up to me, this was my best friend, he was so intense and his jaw was clenched and his eyes were like this. He's like, so when are you going to sign up? And it wasn't my friend anymore. It scared me. I did not recognize him. And I didn't sign up. I got out of there. And 
I made a phone call to him after the fact and I said, Hey man, I, I just want you to know, like I support you and I want you to do well, but I looked this company up and I think it's a pyramid scheme and he just blew up on me. You're just like everyone else. They told me you would say that you don't believe in me. You're a hater. And that was literally the end of our friendship. And it was such a painful experience for me to lose my best friend just for trying to look out for him. I was so confused and so enamored with this thing that I had just experienced that when I started making YouTube videos, I thought I have to look into this more. And you know, here we are today in 2023. And uh, you know, there are obviously a lot of other people who are interested in this phenomenon called multi-level marketing as well. So that's my background. My intent to answer your question, my intent is to provide awareness primarily about what this industry is. What is multi-level marketing? What does it do? How does it affect people? And in my opinion, I've experienced enough of what multi-level marketing has to offer and what it has shown about itself to me that I believe it is harmful and I believe it needs to go away. And that is, you know, this YouTube channel is a stepping stone, hopefully, on that mission. Do you mind, do you mind if I respond to a couple things? Please do. Number one, now that was seven years ago that you went to that event with your friend, right? Yes, sir. Do you have seven years later, you still feel this compulsion to wind up exposing the multi-level marketing industry? It was sort of something that I fell into by accident. I enjoyed my experience the first video that I made where I was just sort of going to troll and show how ridiculous it was with the clapping and the cheering and the, you can make million, you know, there's one woman in, in the video who said, our next presenter has made half million, half billion dollars, whatever that <laughs> means. And so, so there's, you're not going to get any argument on that. There's a clown show in every one of them. I want, I really want to point out your intent, right? Because if this is my profession, right? And this is my passion to wind up changing the industry. One of the things that I want to establish, you know, you have me on your content, and let's let's not mince words here. You have me on your content to create views, right? To wind up, uh, we our goal for anything is to educate. How do we educate? We educate by engaging somebody. We engage them by entertaining them. So if you you if you fundamentally admit that you started out as a cheater base with this person, that we have to look at the integrity and the intention of what you're doing. When it comes down to the anti MLM content, I did one of the first videos I did on you was six months ago, right? And the response, you, you owned up to what the response was to that. If you looked at your content before, and this is just what I want to establish, because I do, I do want, if we're going to be on the same page for things, I want our intention to be the same. Is your intention to legitimately solve a problem in an industry, eradicate it, you want to get rid of it, or did you see that when you started doing network marketing videos, they outranked your rap videos, they outranked your stand-up comic videos, and there was a theme with some of the other videos that you did. Because in one of the videos that you did talking about me, you had said, this guy's, you know, 47, 48 years old. Why does he keep doing all these things out there? Well, and I told you personally, it's because I've never been married and never have children. And I have an ambitious drive to always fill my time. On that same note, at 26, you've been a stand-up comedian. And then I believe the video was up on your content that, I, you know, I'm not saying, I hate the word scam. I'm so tired of it because it's, it's so used like, nar it's overused like narcissist. Everybody's a narcissist. Everybody's a scam artist. One of the people you contact or you're in contact with at CoffeeZilla, everything in the world is a scam to him. It's just so, we, we'll talk about the legitimacy of a scam and whatnot and with special attentions. But I want to know based on your attention, are you truly looking to change this industry? Or did you just see out of all the content on your social media that the anti-MLM content which is so highly emotionally outperforms everything else that you rebrand it. Because if we're going to go this area and you look at how network marketing anti or MLM 100% operates on a manipulation factor, aren't you doing the same thing to your audience where you're manipulating emotion to wind up building business for monetization for your YouTube channel? Or is your intent legitimate, legitimately, I really want to end this industry because it's so painful for me for what I went through seven years ago. That's a valid question, and I understand from your perspective why it might seem that there's an ulterior motive beyond just what I am reporting to you, which is the noble endeavor to stop people from being scammed. Interestingly, I have never heard anybody say something along the lines of what you said about views. I have never heard anyone accuse the director of a documentary that exposes the drug trade or human trafficking or Jeffrey Epstein. I've never heard anybody criticize that director and say, he just wants views. That's a really interesting uh, take 
to me because just because something is getting views that uh, I, I guess maybe from is your purview, your that your means that it's, it's financially motivated and that there's no other value to be derived from it. I will say when I first made the video, when I first started making YouTube videos, you mentioned comedy, music, other things of that um, nature. Of course, every video a person who is creative drops, they want to do well. And for myself, I have and had many creative outlets that I wanted to explore. The thing that you brought up with the old videos, comedy, music, whatever, the, deci the decision to focus in with this channel, Always Marco, on the niche of MLM is simply an algorithmic decision. I realize that if people keep coming back to the same channel and it's similar and you're not throwing curveballs, the channel will do better. Does money come as a byproduct of people watching the videos? Absolutely. If I'm helping people, I make no bones about that. I'm proud to make money. I believe we, you know, we live in a capitalistic society. I want to help people with my content. I believe it's doing that. And it also does make money. And I'm happy to admit that. There's no, no shame in that, in my opinion. Because you should. If you should my, 100%. Thank you. If, if, money. if my videos were not helping people, nobody would watch. Thus, I wouldn't make money. So I think it's kind of a moot point when you bring up, aren't you just doing it for views? What other Be intent would you be doing it for? Are you legit? Like, so for me... My Can one I, channel, my one channel is not monetized because it's not even remote. It's, I have 480 subscribers, right? I've committed. I could easily monetize and teach coaching lessons for sales training, cold marketing and warm marketing, all that. But I've publicly committed to never monetizing my YouTube channel for the bull of MLM. Nonsense. When that that's nonsense. No, I, so that's, that, that's your opinion. But, but if it opinion. was monetized and the money was it's, there, you wouldn't take it? If you had a video go a million no, views I'm, tomorrow, I'm giving you, please. I'm giving you my intent. Well, I, but I have other sources of income. So that's my value system, though. So you 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 just stated your state is to, if you if you are not looking to get money, you know, that's, that's I can't fault you for that. I didn't Me, say that. On this, particular, on this particular channel, I've committed to never wind up monetizing it. So again, when we talk about this, I'm looking to provide value. If my values provide video on, my, on uh, YouTube and I don't get monetized, I still have prospects, right? And if I'm worth anything when it comes down to network marketing, hopefully I could convert those viewers, those commenters into my business, partner with them and make money. So ultimately, I'll be making money by working with them. So that's my position in order okay, to teach Okay, hold on, time problem. out. When it come, hang on, when it, let me get this out. When it comes to yours, that's where I want to know is, is you, you are you looking to fundamentally change the industry because of a pain point with you or are you looking to make money from rebranding yourself and moving forward with YouTube? It's a legitimate question. With all due respect, Dom, I think saying that your channel that you don't want to be monetized is a very easy pre excuse for saying for why it isn't monetized. You could very easily just say, well, I don't want to make money as an excuse for why you don't have enough subscribers further to that. If you were providing value, which you claim is your intent, I would think that you would have more subscribers. And I'm not subscriber shaming you, but you've dropped a ton of videos. And I've been doing this a long time as well, the content thing. If so your people, algorithm, the, by, so you're, you're backing up what you said, because if that's the case- Of course I'm backing up what I said. Then, you're, then your music videos and your, uh, your other videos on, on comedy would have that same standpoint. Don't forget, I just started this channel six months ago and I can't dictate the growth of it, right? That being said, again, what is your intent? Is your intent to make this a business for anti-MLM? Because you have no experience in this industry. Okay, None. pause. Have, uh, Mike, I'm going to finish this. You have no experience. You don't teach. You actually sit there and capitalize off of all the anti-MLM content creators that have been through these content, been through this exposure, been through loss of money. Aren't you just piggybacking off of their audience to bring them in because you know this content really is something that they're all, they want that that harump for. Sure, oh, here's sure, another sure. person who's on our team. That's a great question, and I do understand why you view it that way. My response is threefold. The first point that I would like to address, because I want to give you the respect of addressing each nuance that you presented. So please allow me the courtesy sure. of responding to each of them. Firstly, to say that I'm have no experience. I think I already qualified my experience, which is watching countless hours and attending countless hours of presentations from the people in the company themselves who only knew me as a blank slate. They didn't know my intention. I think that counts for something. Further, we already know what happens 
if I come to you and I say, yeah, I was in a company and I'm, now I'm not in a company, we already know what the argument is going to be from your side. It's that I didn't work hard enough. It's that the system wasn't what was bad. It was me that was bad. So it's sort of a lose-lose. If, if I was in a company, it's I didn't work hard enough. If I'm not in a company, it's that I'm not qualified to say it. So it's a lose-lose. So I guess I would hope that you would at least see the value in me being a person oh, who wasn't I, in a company. And and. No. Okay, well, it's like that because of my law enforcement background, it's the same thing as people who think they're police or they want to be police officers being able to critique a use of force incidents. They, everyone has allowed their opinion, so you're a hundred percent allowed your opinion. But I want to acknowledge the fact you have no experience. I've got two nieces, and I've babysat. I was a cop. I was a juvenile officer. I don't have children. Am I qualified to be a parent just based on what I saw? I think. Having a baby and being a parent are two wildly different things. Is anyone really ready well, to be a parent? Ears. Pardon me? Now you're splitting ears. On this concept, if I, if I wind up watching 20 hours of YouTube open heart surgery, does that make me qualified okay. enough? When it comes to something in the medical professional, in the medical field profession, no, it doesn't make you qualified. You actually have to go to school for that. And that is one of those things where I think what you are saying is a false equivalence because being a heart surgeon is a life or death matter. We hold heart surgeons to a higher standard than we do to people selling shampoo and face cream. So, okay, that's fine. Then we need to look at this as a sales industry, correct? Yes, but I, I just... So if this I'm is a sales on, industry, so I, we I have just... No we have just established something that we both agree with. There needs to be certification or licensing or some type of sales program. Otherwise, you will continue to perpetuate all of these angry women who have been in a business they had no business being with the first place, not being able to make any money, failing, and then perpetuating this downplaying in the importance of an industry. Will you at least give me the courtesy of, of acknowledging the quagmire that you've put me in when you purport or propose the idea that I'm not qualified to discuss it because I was never in it. Can we, can we oh, accept, you're, you're, you're can we accept that me. actually perhaps I'm a bit more able to look at the industry objectively because I wasn't in it? Like you just said, all these emotional women. Well, I'm not a woman, nor was I emotional, nor am I emotional about the industry because I was never burned by it. So can we at least give me some more credit and say that perhaps I have there's a bit more be. of an objective worldview on it? Because first, it, you know, there's many layers to what people in the MLM community say about me. You were never in it, so how can you speak on it? Which follows up the opposite. If I was in it, you would say that I failed. I didn't work hard enough. And then there's you the other layer too, it. which I wasn't in it. And it's, oh, well, you're just doing it for views and money anyways. Both of these things I think are easily deflated arguments. If, if, I mean, when I respond, I think I, I, I think responded adequately. I think you have to acknowledge it. You don't have experience. You could have read all the books. You could have gone all the training, but you've never applied anything. So, Dominic, so can I ask it, you, if I was in a yeah. company for six months and I lost a few thousand dollars to you, would that qualify me as being experienced? Ex well, you'd have six months of experience, of course. And then we would dis And then I'm guessing in your hypothetical here, we would dissect why I lost money and why I had a bad experience. And I'm guessing that we would surmise the point that it was because I didn't work hard enough. <laughs> No, if that's your only argument, Marco, then you really got to get past that because that that's a that's a bullshit statement. You're 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 well, that's lumping something you in, yourself say, you're lumping, especially lumping about these in. angry women. They didn't work hard enough. Go ahead. That's exactly that's exactly the piss poor training they got. The last woman you had on, Erin Bees, to six different companies, and I watched that video and I feel absolutely horrible for her because she's a standard in what the industry is. How do you go from six different companies making six figures on paper? Only bringing in ten grand, being manipulated, and now having such a bad taste around. Are you telling me that you, because she would, she had ten years in the industry, or thirteen years in the industry? So are you telling me that you're just as qualified as all the all the trauma and pain that she went through? To where do you think it's fair? Let me just say this, because you're representing yourself as an expert in the field of anti MLM. People look at your content, they see a bright blue banner, uh, 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 always Marco, anti-MLM, 56,000 subscribers or whatever you have. And they're going to come to your content looking for, looking for education because YouTube is the second biggest search engine out there. So when they type it in, you're going to dominate this field. Do you personally, in front of every video, do you have a disclaimer? I'm always Marco. These are my opinions. I've never been in an MLM, but I'm going to be talking about this industry. And do you think it's fair that above all of these other women who have actually been through these horror stories that 
yeah, you're getting more attention than they are, but you haven't done anything compared to what they've gone through. So when it comes down to it, do you see how it could, it could be perceived as, which I'm fine, I'm a capitalist. The number one reason I am in network marketing, multi is to make money. End of story. Money is energy. See, I could do so much with money, that's it. If I told, if I told oh, I'm just going to change people's lives, no, I'm in to make money to change my life to change their lives. End of story. If you, are, if you are not in this to make money based off of your YouTube, that you found a niche to operate on, therefore scrubbing the entirety of your content and then saying, all right, I'm going to capitalize off this, and you're not offering that disclaimer on every video. I've never done the industry. I watched the, I've been to a couple seminars. I've seen sure, this. Sure. These are my opinions well, and views. I, I don't put a disclaimer, but I do say it vocally, and I also don't think the disclaimer would make a difference when it comes to people in the MLM industry knocking me down. I'm going to ask you one favor. I want to keep the conversation focused on you and me and not implicate other people because if we do that, I think we're going to go down – a uh, not good. Oh, well, that's then you have to then you have to eliminate the industry too when you're talking about what other people would do in the industry. The, the, well, I the thought point your you intent was to figure out what's wrong. Okay, fine. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll concede here. that. I'll concede that. If you want me to rebuttal that, Aaron was in the industry 13 some years with six companies. You've been in the company in the industry since 2012. So Aaron had more experience than you, objectively sure. speaking. Also, you named you mentioned si she was in six companies. You were in one company. You left that company for another company. Now you're back in that company. That's three. You used to be a police officer before that. You had a short stint as a realtor. You owned a gym as well. That's six different industries as well. And as far as I know, here you are today not a millionaire. So I think uh, if we really were to dissect this idea of these lazy, angry women that just don't work I, hard enough, my question, question is, if, if, if so women are just your, too stupid to question. understand the industry, how come here's you your, yourself are not at the top of the industry? First, there, there's, your first, there's your first fact that we need to eliminate that is the, 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 the crown jewel of all anti-MLMers. You guys establish millionaire status, rightfully so, because the MLM community just, you got to be a millionaire. Why is it that you're only successful in network marketing if you're a millionaire? If somebody Go makes ahead. enough, if somebody makes more, this is a question. If somebody makes more, because we have to establish, you have to buy into a company, right? And you, so you're going to pay that fee. You have to purchase something every month. If you make a dollar more, and there's going to be a caveat to this too. If you make a dollar more than you spend every month, or did you, did you profit? Yes. Okay. So right there, is that a, is that a success if you profited? How how much time did it take you to make one dollar? Well, that's the other. That's the other part too. Now, because one of the videos you did, which so many people, Coffeezilla likes to do too, is it's more profitable to work at a McDonald's than it is at an MLM. And you guys love to use the statistics out there. Okay. When I saw Aaron B's talk about the fact that she worked twenty four seven, it is impossible to measure the quality. Hard work is what everybody says. Hard work, hard work. What's the quality of the work that they're doing? That's something that nobody's being taught. That's the sales aspect okay, of it. Okay. That's the people skills. So, so ultimately speaking, why is it? Because you lose the argument every time every one of you say, oh, I was, because it is kind of stupid. If all of these women who are doing anti-MLM, do you really respect them if they were at the top 20, the top 2%, top 3% of their industry? And again, we got to look at that. What are they, the top 3% out of 30 people in their company? or a thousand people in their company? What was, the, what was the, the standard in that? If they left, why did they leave when they were making money in that top percent? And then the other aspect of it is too is, why is the standard a million dollars? If we have somebody making $10,000 extra every year and the cost benefit analysis for them is more profitable based on their perception, right? Because they, maybe they love working 50 hours a week and making five grand a, a year off. I, I can't put that value on it. <laughs> Whose standard is the failure rate? Well, I say millionaire because that's typically what people in the MLM presentations say to people to entice them. They use the and M word. They need word. to be vilified. They okay. need to be condemned. So, I mean, let me just, I, I do want to address what you said. I'm not in, I'm not, I don't have a time crunch here. I'm good to, I'm good to. Oh, we're good. Yeah, so we're, we're good. good, right? And we, we're, I think this is going productively thus far. And uh, you've been respectful. I think I've been respectful. I want Very to go. Much. One by one, I would like to have an exchange with you that doesn't entrail off into other, uh, other topics. You want to talk first about the 99% loss rate, perhaps. That's one of the things that I have written down. I want to make sure I'm answering your question. I will go with what you want and give you a fair response because I don't want this to end. And tomorrow you say that I was ducking and dodging questions. 
I, I don't to, know you. So uh, far, you uh, haven't been. Okay. No, I won't okay, accuse you that good, at good, all. Okay, good, good, good. So I, I, you did say a lot just there on your last exchange. Can you? Right. Will you ask me a question that is? Why is it? Why yeah. do you consider the standard to be a millionaire or you fail? If you don't make a million dollars in network marketing, you are a failure. Why is that? Outside of outside of the emotional status, where the I could, you we align in those presentations, right? They always have the mic. I had seven dollars in my pocket, and I was living out of my car, and now I'm a millionaire because all I did was talk to Jane, and Jane got yeah, me yeah, on this. Yeah. Pro I've heard it a million times, right. and those people are fucking scum. So if that if we have to look at it that way, I honestly here's where I'll agree with you, and I'm gonna get I don't want to get too long winded. Please, I said Marco, dude. All you have to get two people and you're going to be a millionaire. Your standard is two people equals a million dollars. Okay, so you agree that that's that's wrong. It's deceptive. It's deceptive. Okay, so we yes, boom, we found common ground because I agree. I think that's deceptive yes. as well. To answer your question, would I consider whatever whatever failure? Why is that the standard? I'll give you my actual answer. To me, the standard should equate to the expectations delivered by the superior in the company. If I am told when I join that it's realistic for me to make $20,000 in my first three months, then I am, right, I am rightfully entitled to be disappointed when that doesn't happen, even if I follow every step that was given to me. That's why I say the million, because usually the wealth promises are so fucking huge when you attend one of these meetings. Like when I was 19, the first ever meeting I ever attended, and this has been consistent in every meeting that I've ever attended in Zoom or in person since seven years, Okay, they all say the same thing or a species of the same thing. And it's a vast wealth claim. So to me, I, I don't need to hold the industry to a million dollars. If people were paid at least a competitive amount to minimum wage for the hours they put in, I think that would be a start. But unfortunately, the industry is so far below that while making such a promise on the opposite end of the spectrum. That I think is the first problem. I mean, the issues I have with MLM are innumerable, but let's start there, okay? Let's start there. Let's expectations, who's the expectations. Let, who's, who's making those expectations, corporate or the person that's doing the recruiting? Great question. So officially on paper, I have, I have downloaded the income disclosure statements of countless companies, and I've downloaded the social media guidelines handbooks, the PDFs of multiple companies. And officially, their position is that we do not support making wealth claims, posting pictures on yachts and private jets and exotic vehicles. Well, However, hopefully that has to be the case, right? Of course. Legally, they have to be able to say that so that they can throw whoever does that under the bus and say, oh, it's not the company. The company's position, it's so that they don't have to take any accountability. Of course, uh, remember all the people. Remember, we have a separation. Remember yes, we have so, a separation. Okay, so of course, all the top people in the company do this. And I think that if they didn't do this, people wouldn't join the company. I think these wealth promises are made because the large majority of people who join MLM companies are vulnerable people who need to be told these things to be convinced. Because if they had their rational faculties about them, they never would. Do zero disagreement. If I said, Marco, I want you in my company. You're going to make zero dollars for probably your first year. You're going to have the hardest time recruiting unless you've been a natural born salesperson. You are, your job is to sell product, recruit, manage people, train, and it, it's, you're going to wind up spending hours a day doing this. You're going to have an 80% dropout rate from the people you come bring in. You're going, to, you're going to attract more people who are just dreamers and lazy. Would you do the industry? Probably not. So we need to be transparent up front, right? I respect we that. Say, I respect we that. We need to say this. So that's where the one of the biggest problems I have with the anti-MLM community is they're dying on this hill of, well, you don't make money unless you really recruit. Nobody's denying this is a recruiting business. That they're they're a broken record. This business is about the problem a few is things. people aren't disclosing that it's if, a recruitment if, business. If if I date some, if I go to the strip club, and I'm I'm 47. And I believe every word that comes out of the stripper's mouth, how much she loves me. Right. And I take her home and I, you know, she winds up draining my bank account. Whose fault is that? I'm going to answer to, to humor you on this analogy, although I disagree with the analogy, but that would be your fault, Dominic. No, I don't think, you know, absolutely not. It's sales. Everything we do is sales. Everything. When you look at it, because you said it, why it's kind of curious. 
Why? Are you holding a stripper on, to the on, same standard of on, integrity oh, no, 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 as a person no, wait, who's a businessman? You No, you can't go that route of it because what's the classification of the person that you described that people are targeted as? Victims, vulnerable, right? Okay. So are you saying that the people they go after, why, why are you using that choice of words for those people? Uh, can you clarify what choice of words? Meaning uh, vulnerable. Why is it that they go after the vulnerable? And if we know that 74% of the people who are involved with network marketing are specifically women, are you saying that women are just aloof and vulnerable and easy pickings for people who have a charismatic tongue like a stripper? So it's not so much the demographic of women. You're correct in your statistic about the 74% of women. And I believe it's women between age 25 and 45. 30, 35 and 45. Okay. Women in that age group, and I hope you don't say that I'm not a woman in that age group, so I'm not qualified to talk about this, but women in that age group deal with things as a byproduct of being alive that make them more vulnerable, whether it's motherhood, whether it's being a stay-at-home mom or wife, that can that can be isolating it, they they might feel a loss of identity they might feel some postpartum issues and these companies hey girl in the dm and start preying in my opinion on women's insecurities oh you're trying to lose that baby weight oh you want to compete with your husband so that your husband isn't the one doing everything oh you don't want to just be a stay-at-home mom do you i don't think it has anything uh, no i i don't think it's just that okay. women are aloof and too stupid I, don't. I, I have a question based off that so does that mean with postpartum depression uh family issues spousal issues all those things you list as does that attribute more to their failure in network marketing or the industry contributes more to their failure because of uh, the, right. the scam. Good question. It, contribu it? it contributes more to their signing up to multi-level marketing in the first place. Once they are in the system, the system is designed for them to fail. It just so happens oh, that, that the people define who are that. attracted to it. Pardon me? Run with that for a second. Run with that for a second. How do you define? If a system is simply, Marco, come in. You're going to pay X amount of dollars to come in. You're going to purchase a product then my job is to perpetuate that, right? Because I actually follow right. the Robert Kiyosaki model. I, I have, there's a, the hardest thing to do, and I learned this the hard way, is you go after people, you pressure them down, wear them down for the sale, and then try to turn them into a business owner. Then that's where the whole friends and family garbage comes in, which I completely am anti against all this stuff. Robert Kiyosaki wrote this in his books, and I agree with this, is you find somebody who sees the value of leveraging their social media, leveraging the tax laws, coming in, making bucks by being their own customer. Okay, that to me answers the question that I had problems with years ago. Hey, I had canceled my auto ship. I didn't have a reason to keep them on their auto ship, right? There was no value for that. So if we start there, if that's the system, the system is simply sell a product, get people to become involved in the industry, recruiting, teach, manage, and repeat. How is that system set up for failure versus all the moving parts of women whose their personal lives prevent them from doing right. that? So, Dom, we already agreed that most people presented multi-level marketing are not disclosed the system you just described. Yes. Now we're talking people, though. So the, if you, I think okay. everybody needs to change their narrative because if you, if you need to go, I'm anti-MLM I'm anti MLM people. You know, the industry, if you're going to talk about the industry, the, can we agree that the system itself, the non-living, non-breathing system itself of pit, of recruit, sell, is not stacked against anyone. I believe it is. How do you do that? It's not, it's not a leaving, living, breathing thing. How do you do that? Let me answer. Sure. You obviously will know what I'm talking about here. In multi-level marketing, the typical flow of business is a person pays for a starter kit. They have a supply of products. Let's just, I'm not going to name a specific company, but let's just say it's shampoo. You have X amount of shampoo in your starter kit. You sell that starter kit and you're entitled to X percentage off that sale. Would you agree? No, that's not. So the, the, clarify that for because I'm not familiar with that system. Are you saying that people have to purchase, they purchase their, their franchise fee, then they purchase a package? Not franchise. Not it's not a franchise. Regardless. How is it not a franchise? Explain that one to me. Well, in franchise law, a lot of the reason why these MLM companies make the startup cost less than $500 is because legally, if it costs more than $500, you do have to, it does qualify as a franchise, which means you have to provide disclosure similar to how if you wanted to open a McDonald's, 
you get a chance to look at the books of what other McDonald's in the area typically do numbers wise. And in MLM, they don't want to show you the numbers because if they showed you those disclosures that franchisees people would get have to make to a see, choice, then right. people would go, oh, most people lose in a year. I'm not going to join this. So, uh, so sorry. I, I, I hope you don't think disclosure. it's a nitpick, but you're not a franchisee in an MLM, you, you nor are you a business keep, owner. Keep using that because I've used those terms. I don't mind being corrected on terms. It doesn't bother me. If that's the case, then it just makes me more well, well educated sure. on this. So, there, are so there, you're are cool there with me saying that, you're cool with of that. Course, okay. Of course I am. To me, honestly, I didn't know the difference between network marketing and MLM. They're blanketed, in my opinion. If yes. this is not a franchise, explain that. Are yeah. there some companies that have the multi-level marketing format that charge a proper franchise uh, a fee? Are there some out there? Not as far as Which I know. Be, so there's no company that uh, that is over $500 to enroll? Not as far as I know. There could be, but okay. not as far as I know. Okay. No, that's fine. Um, I lose or, the point for where we were going for this. Uh, also, but, business yeah. owner. I, I don't believe you're a business owner. Are you a business owner? Me? Yeah. I do happen to have an, an incorporated uh, bi numbered business. I do, yeah. Okay. Are, is your YouTube, is that a business? I would say my YouTube is a business because it generates money, which I report through my business account and my accountant processes it as income through my business. Yes, sir. But I don't own <laughs> YouTube, okay. the company. I know where you're going with this. Oh, well, okay. So explain the difference between the company I'm with. I get to wind up leveraging tax laws. Okay. 1099. Yeah, so what, yeah. what is the difference between those two? So 1099, does that make you a business owner? Because a pizza delivery guy is a 1099 and he doesn't own Pizza sure. Hut. So, sure. Okay. So just because is you he, pay. So, okay. The difference is for, for YouTube. You're right. I don't own YouTube. I, wouldn't, I, I also don't claim that I do. This is your business. Is these videos, doing, doing your videos your business? I don't have to pay to join YouTube well, or upload you. videos to YouTube. I also don't have to recruit other YouTubers not, who then sell my videos you. to people on YouTube. That's so, But you asked ask me the difference. You do need views. You do need views. Uh, you, you do need Yeah, that. but I'm not so, recruiting I, people, promising is, them wealth. Is, is, is it, do, is your YouTube videos, your editing, your time filled, is that your business? Are you proud of it? And you tell people, yeah, it's part of my business? Yes. Okay. That, there's, if you really look at it. But Dominic, it, again, I, hold on. I think, you know, I think. I think you're not listening. You asked me what are the differences, and I think those differences are important to note. I don't have to pay to join YouTube. When I started making YouTube videos, no one was promising me that I'd become a millionaire. It was, it's, it's known that it's a very difficult thing to excel in. I don't have to pay monthly for YouTube. It's, if you wanna buy YouTube premium to skip ads, it's optional. You're actually getting something for that. There, those are very important differences in my opinion. And also imagine if, my, imagine if the amount of like my RPM or my CPM, imagine if that was calculated based on how many YouTubers I had under me and that dictated how much money my views were worth. In MLM, and this is something with my uh, hypothetical here about the shampoo made up shampoo MLM, which you, we sort of deviated, but in an MLM, if I'm selling a bottle of shampoo, why is it? Actually, rhetorical question. Well, my upline, back. my mm -hmm. upline is going to make a more, a higher chunk of percentage off that sale than I will, even though I am the one who facilitated the sale. Maybe I sold it to my friend from school or something like that. That is perfectly anti-business. It's upside down. I cannot think of another industry where a bigger slice of the pie on a sale goes to the person who wasn't involved in the sale than to the person who actually made the sale. I think that right there, th doesn't that suggest to you uh, an emphasis on recruiting, which is by the way, one of the FTC's red flags for how to spot a pyramid scheme. If your, in, if your commission percentage is unlocked by ha recruiting more people, if you can't make a livable commission of just selling the product unless you have people under you, wouldn't you agree that that subtly or, or, or aggressively implies that you have to recruit in order to make a lot of money? I would see that's, you know, if we go into personalities, I like that. So we'll get in that in a second. I want to go back to YouTube for a sure. second. If you, uh, if you look at it, so you don't have to recruit anybody, but does YouTube continue your, your um, RPM increases based off of the views that you get, right? And for the analytics to put, we see that most people, for their YouTube views to wind up going, uh, it has to be recommended by YouTube, right? That's one of the most powerful ways for the content to go out there. That's why your content is exponentially searching or being, or being, or being uh, exposed. So you, you would agree that the more views you have is a bonus. 
And the more people who subscribe to you, we could dumb this down and say, eh, they could be equivalent to, to recruits. Those people will be reminded of your videos being popped up first being subscribers, right? So it is kind of in your intent to wind up putting more value out there so people will wind up staying attached yeah. to you. We have to acknowledge that for a second. I mean, I wouldn't call them recruits though, Dom. They're still supporting you. They're supporting me, but I didn't tell them they're going to make a million dollars from subscribing to me, nor did I, I require that I they didn't. pay. They also didn't have Man, to pay have to, to join that. Always Marco. We've established that. We've established that. So, but how are you we, holding it up as a, as a comparison, though? A comparison for the intent, right? My intent, because I don't I do not do the whole $100 million a, a BS uh, argument coming in. You don't. We've already established that. No, I don't. But you've already established <laughs> that you think there's a widespread issue in the MLM industry, and we got to drain the swamp, right? So, you. You so, do. So, so... The exception doesn't disprove the rule. I believe you when you say you're a transparent businessman who lays it out in crystal clear, black and white, plain English for your recruits. However, we can accept that most people don't do that, right? And if most people yeah, don't and, do and that- so what is, And what do they go off of that? That's intention, right? Because intention's everything. So we can agree. We can, it, this, is, this is where you know, I, I, I appreciate the position. I like the nitpicking. Hold my feet to the coals, I don't care. I don't think That's I'm nitpicking. No, it, but, but wait a second. If we're going to talk about the semantics of words and how they're used and then the intention of people who are recruiting and saying, hey, oh, by the way, here's the million dollars, we also have to talk about your intentions for your businesses. If you talk to people, like, if, have you ever just told, when you describe what you do on YouTube to people, when they say, Marco, what's your business? What do you do? Do you answer that with saying, you know, I'm a YouTube influencer or I'm X, Y, and Z? And has everybody ever called you out and said, oh, wait a second, you're not a business owner on YouTube. That's not what you get from that. Actually, so no one's ever told me that. Everything. No one's actually ever told me that except people in an MLM who are trying to find a false equivalence for why what they do is exactly what I do, which couldn't be further from the truth. There's the intention. You you keep coming back to the answers for, well, you get people trying to false promise a million dollars. We've established intent. That's what I'm, that's my, that's my equivalency is intention. Your intention is to build a business. My intention is to build a business. The people who are scamming people, unfortunately, their intention is to build a business. So if we start to look at this, you have to start removing emotion and intention. So I don't think my argument as to why YouTube is not the same as MLM is... It's not the same as MLM. I, no, I don't think it's a matter of intention, though, because let's say I had really bad intentions as a YouTuber, and my intentions were to make people pay right? Or my intention was to falsely mislead people and tell them if they subscribe to my channel and watch my videos, they're going to make, you know, all their dreams are going to come true. Even if that was my intention, YouTube does not have the tools to allow me to perpetuate that. There is no, there is no like paywall that can stop somebody from watching my YouTube videos. I suppose I could only publish videos to the members on my channel, but if that was the case, I would not be able to take advantage I mean, of, of YouTube's sure. algorithm like you mentioned. I could lock all my videos behind Patreon, but that would probably be a bad right, business so move for me, right? In you, MLM, in me, MLM, yeah. the reason I say it's a systemic issue and the problem is industry-wide is because if you do have bad intentions, it's the fruit is ripe. It's right there for you to be able to execute on. And I also think I said this to you in a text message. I think regardless of your intentions, like Dom, let's say you have good intentions, right? You believe in being transparent. I think that the business is ultimately doomed to become a scam regardless of your intentions. And we can talk about that later, but I'll give you a chance to respond. Go ahead. Sure. You, you don't have any recruits or anything. Um, people don't have to pay for your content. Nobody has to pay. I'm sorry, what? Nobody has to pay for my content, correct? Do you, you want to talk about, you have a Patreon, right? And you yes, have certain sir. tiers. Yes, what are sir. the tiers of your Patreon? And then what do you offer each one? So the tiers of my Patreon, in short, are you get early access to my new videos. I like how you, you're you giving me an opportunity to plug my Patreon here. Link yes, in the description. Sir. Link in the description. You get, much, all, you get access to early content, uh, the new multi-level misery episodes a day early, a next one dropping tomorrow. You get access to exclusive posts that I don't make anywhere else. You get access to an exclusive uh, hidden VIP channel in my Discord server. Uh, what else? You can get your name in the description. And how, much are those? <laughs> how much are those? So your top tier... They, what yeah, is the your top, top tier is like 200 bucks. So you're charging $200 for shouting out somebody's name, early release on videos. Uh, you, I believe there's something where they can have a conversation with you. You're charging for that kind of stuff, right? $200 a month? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if somebody is stupid enough to wind up buying for that, is that Don't your fault? Don't say that, Dom. Not? Don't say they're stupid no. if they buy it. But what is, what, so you, you charge for a phone call? You charge for a releasing a day? You, you, see, you legitimately, personally, you see value... 
in shouting someone's name out in your video by making them feel good, by giving them release in a video early, by phone call. So you are making right, people right, right, feel right. good. So are you manipulating vulnerable people who follow your content? No. Continue. Do you want me, you want me to explain? The Please beauty do. of capitalism, right? The first law of business, supply and demand, right? If nobody, if nobody saw the need for that, if nobody felt that it was worth it to buy it, I wouldn't sell anything. Would you agree? Uh, I don't know because I think you can create any need for something. I think the greatest sales sure. mountains are seen in network marketing. Yeah, yeah. And if, I was, and if I was deceptive, I could probably falsely create that need, right? Well, does every one of your – you do you have a disclaimer – on your personal content that you were never involved in the network marketing industry. You're, you're changing the topic now completely. Well, I'm asking, do you, that's, you just said deceptive. Do you personally have a disclaimer? I have never been involved in network marketing sales. The disclaimer usually comes that's in the true. form of the you, title where I say you, that I'm anti-MLM in the description and it's, it's pretty obvious so, on the, you know, like you mentioned on the banner on my channel, it says anti-MLM, I think that's my disclaimer. Says, I have never bought sold, been involved in an MLM company. Do I have a disclaimer that says that? Right. No. You have that. Why not? Because I say it openly. I, I don't think that's like a, a hidden fact. I, I Again, I, we well, talked you, about this why before. Do you, you have I an don't about, think, you hold have on, an about section, right? Be fair. I don't think it would have, we talked about this earlier. I don't think it would have made a difference. Certainly to you, it doesn't make a difference whether I was in a company or or I wasn't. You're, so, assuming, you're assuming what your network wants to know. Do you think that if, do you think that if people sat there, I, let's talk about this for a second. If a majority of the women out there are let's the audience focused. for network marketing. No, I, I am saying focus because you can't avoid this one. If, if a majority of the people out there are women who are upset emotionally for getting screwed over by all these hay huns, and here comes Marco, and he goes from music and rap and then sees a vulnerable society that wants somebody to agree with them because misery loves company, and you don't put up in the about section, hey, I'm passionate about changing this industry, blah, blah, blah. By the way, I have never had any experience in network marketing, but you're dominating Julie Joe, you're dominating Jessica Hickson, you're dominating Aaron, By Aaron Byers. Are you defrauding their audience by not letting them know and then taking money out of the mouth from these women who are also trying to uh, uh, leverage capitalism? No. Or is this capitalism and fuck all, it's a fair game. It's capitalism and it's a fair game. If people see value in the content, they'll support the content. And also, to come back to your point, during this live stream, people have been donating super chats, which thank you guys, I appreciate it. I haven't been able to read them because it's been going so fast. And I'm, I'm yes, yeah, so, so, so people, hold on. And and, and did I promise? And before those people us? dropped, before those people dropped the super chats tonight, did I promise them anything? No, they wanted to support. So to combat your Patreon thing that you mentioned before, if people saw the value in my Patreon, and it is transparent, all the perks that you get are right there. I'm not saying like, give me the money first, then we'll see, or give me the money first, and all your dreams will come true. I am being transparent. I am providing a disclaimer or a disclosure, which is I think the point you're trying to make with, do I say whether I was in an MLM or not? That that, with all due respect, is a moot point. No, it's not. Because again, if I provide value, when value is clear, decisions are easy. People are donating in the chat because they're being entertained. They like this. Okay, so value. It's a value yeah, exchange then. So value is what you bring up, right? But again, if you talk about all the hidden things you know, that it's not a franchise fee because they're going to charge less than $500 or otherwise you have to disclose things, you, you glance over it. Hey, I'm always Marco. This, I've never been involved in a network marketing company. Anyways, I want to talk about X, Y, and Z. Why is it? Why, in all the other areas of competition out there, again, you're you you're dominating the anti MLM field with no experience. You're you are capitalizing off of a very vulnerable group of women, and you don't disclose right up front how you accuse the network marketing company or MLM company of not doing. You don't have in print on your content full disclosure. I was never involved in an MLM. So. Okay. That's my so, answer, so? Oh, oh, then, then that's unfortunately now this is so I don't I don't disagree with you because it is capitalism, right? And I you make you need to make money personally, for as far as your content goes, and I've told you this personally, I acknowledge this publicly. I think you're one of the more educated anti MLM people out there because of how you present the material. But I can go ahead and read Betty Crocker's fucking brownie bakery a hundred times and present it having never baked a cake before, right? So the concept of that is okay. Sorry. It's your presentation. 
But again, isn't that what you are fundamentally complaining about when it comes down to the pitching of the business? People are presenting their value. They're out there being scumbags and shysters, which you and I agree needs to be fucking called out. But hey, let's do this. You're going to do this. Is that still as small as a fine print available? Isn't that income disclosure and everything else and the root of the truth of the business, is that still not made available to people? And just like you, hey, somebody wants to pay me 200 bucks to shout their name on a video. I don't give a fuck. I'll do it. There's a demand there. So isn't the exact same thing you're doing, what you are accusing the people who are manipulating and the vulnerable people in the MLM space? I want to make sure I understand this question because what I think you're saying sounds so preposterous of a, of a comparison of to me that I want of to clarify. Course of course it does. Are you asking me, and I want to give you the respect and courtesy here of repeating back to you what I heard so that I can clarify. Are you suggesting that a person who is in an MLM who presents to another person at a coffee shop and tells them that their dreams are going to be achieved by joining and putting the money down and they don't disclose the actual churn rate or failure rate is in some way equivalent to me having a Patreon that is optional where I disclose in plain English what people get and if they want to support me, they can. I, is that the question? So I'll ask you a question in return. I don't know if that, that tactic in the coffee shop always works, right? Because that's what you're, you're saying always goes on that. I don't know. I've never done that. that I have been pitched that way. It sucks. They're selling. Oh, I know this is very hard for you to wrap your mind around. But to be honest, this is where you lose Just it. Just answer the, game. the question, yes no, or no. Is that what you were asking me? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. That person, just like your Patreon, here's the Patreon, here's the MLM recruit. Do they not both have a choice to wind up buying in to your content and the MLM? Do they? Yes. Okay. Is it not based on your job and the MLM person to provide engaging, charismatic, salesmanship quality content to allure somebody in to influence, because we don't like manipulate, to influence them into seeing the value to spending their money? Yes. On the MLM... If the scumbag shitbird at the dinner the coffee table says all your dreams are going to come true, you're going to get a boat without six months, blah, 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 blah. When that person goes to sign up on the link, is the facts available on the website for the company? I'm asking legitimately because I don't know. With my company, income disclosure is, truth is, all the, all the right. percentages. They're not always available, no. Okay, that, okay, then that's a problem, okay? And, and also, even if they okay. were available, if they're not presented at the outset, and rather the opposite is presented, which is a lie, I, I think we agree. You know, we actually okay. do agree here, which is weird. We actually do agree that lying is bad, right? Yes. Charisma, you, you, salesmanship, you presenting, entertainment, right. that's all important. But lying is bad, right? Wait, you also, are you, so do you, you just answer, it yes or no? Is it a, is it a Are you lying? So don't forget, because character is everything, right? We have to establish. You openly, you openly admitted you cheated, right? That's, that's, a, that's a character flaw. So in this case... On my math test in grade 11? Right? Yeah, I did cheat. And that's, that's an issue. All right. Integrity is everything. Integrity is everything. Okay, but are you, are I, think, you I, think there's, I think there's differences between me cheating on a math test mission? in grade 11 and me defrauding no. a person who's potentially a single mother and telling them that no. they just need to join this business and all their dreams will be achieved. No, I, I think that's I a big difference. Disagree. That's where it starts. There's an acorn for that tree to grow. My point being okay. is if you are not putting that up there because you want the MLM community held accountable. I you want you want to, no, no, no. What I want right now in this present want, moment is for you, you to want, answer my question. Is, I did, I'm answering your question. Is lying yes. bad? You go with your first question. You wanted the equivalency to the, to the uh, coffee shop person and you. You're the same. Okay. Because they may be lying by omission. You're lying by omission. So oh, am I lying? Same no, no. Ex because you are not stating in every single one of your videos, do you open with, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Marco. I've never been in a network marketing company. We already established. Uh, is that Continue. yes or no? I, I didn't hear that question. Do I, do I say in my videos, I'm Marco, I've never every been in an MLM? No, I don't say that. No, I don't. So somebody could come across your video of you going to somewhere and they would think that you have, they would be under the illusion you're misleading them just, and that's not your intention, but could you be seen as misleading them by omitting the fact of you aligning yourself with someone like Aaron Bees, who spent 13 years in the industry, lost $90,000 had so much pain, suffering. Now she's got an emotional tie to it. Are you on? You think that if somebody found out 
that you didn't go through the same thing she or anybody else went through, that they would still respect or follow the content that you were putting out? Or are you misleading people? Whether or not I provided a disclaimer as to whether I was in an MLM or not absolutely has zero effect on whether my Patreon is an optional, plainly disclosed set of features that you will receive if you join my Patreon. That, we agree, is different, a lot different, both in terms of integrity and just the means of doing it, than a person presenting an MLM plan and lying about what the uh, potential upside is going What's to be. What's the common denominator between the two? The common denominator between the two is that there's potentially an exchange of money. I hope. The uh, person, the purchasee, I suppose. So we it, agree. So we agree that at the end of the day, the responsibility falls on the person to discern whether or not they purchase your transaction or they purchase an network marketing company. Correct? Uh, can you can you say that? So at the end of the day, it's the responsibility of the person before they click that button and pay you two hundred dollars for a phone call and shouting out their name versus coming into my company. It's ultimately their discernment. Their, what, their, their, their onus about whether or not they make that decision. So they're the common denominator. Uh, I see, I see. So, Is that correct? So I'm going to do what you did a moment ago and answer a question with a question. I apologize, oh, but I think it's important. Fine. I think it's important. Every person's decision as an individual that they make is, of course, their decision. I, I believe that you don't have to do anything, really. People say, I have to go pick up my dry cleaning. I don't really believe you have to do many things in this life. However, a person making a decision based off of a good faith disclosure, like my Patreon that tells you what you're going to get versus somebody making a purchase decision because their friend from high school lied to them about how much money they're making is a lot different. So while I agree that each person's decision is indeed their responsibility, I don't sit here and fault people who have been lied to or people who have been victimized because they trusted their friend. I think that's an important distinction to make. And I think what you are saying is, if I was to rephrase it, it's like me saying that, well, somebody who bought a drink that had poison in it is ultimately responsible because they should have done the due diligence to find out if there was poison in it, despite the fact that the person who sold them the drink told them, nah, it's cool, no poison in it. So, you're, so you agree that cores <laughs> That, that, that course that advertises that all you got to do is, you know, crack into that Rocky Mountain cold and 19 Swedish bikini tit, big titted models are going to come down on a snowy train and your life is going to be amazing. You agree that that person, when they become an alcoholic, they wind up gaining 50 pounds of a beer belly that shit, it's not their fault. It should have been Coors's fault for that advertising or McDonald's McDonald's that has done research and time to research for color schemes happy meals that when they're selling that grade D meat with, we know has probably got carcinogens and a half in it, or they've got the, um, the, 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 the liquid pink goo that they're pumping into their, their chicken McNuggets. And you know, damn well, the kids are going to go, we want to go to McDonald's that McDonald's should have like those, 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 uh, statements at the end of the, uh, the, like the antihistamine commercials online may cause impotence, may cause death, may I cause this. You. Go ahead make the point. Okay. So, so that's so we're we're we are boiling down to it all comes down to marketing, correct? It is marketing and advertising. What is see it? again, this is this is this is where you will get zero disagreement with so, me. Okay, hold on, pause, 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 pause. I'm I'm I wanna follow you. I wanna follow you because I'm not doing I'm you any favors if I don't follow you. Go ahead. A a person making a purchase is a result of marketing, I agree. Yeah. Yes. So you market to your social media your content, and you're putting it out there what they get, right? Now, wait, wait, I got a question. They get a phone call from you and a shout out. What if your shout out was so less enthusiastic of what they wanted? They were expecting you to come out in a clown hat on a unicycle, you know, fucking in a, in a New Year's Eve baby diaper going, oh my God, Jane Doe, I love you. Here's my bearing nipple chest, all this shit. And they're like, you went, you went, hey, Jane, thanks for the sync of the stuff. Yeah, what well, if your good, level, what well, if you know what? what? I, 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 what if I, I'm your level a, of enthusiasm didn't meet their two hundred dollar expectations. That's the that's the biggest key difference that we're hung up on here is mitigating people's expectations in multi level marketing. Recruiters don't give people clear expectations; they mislead them with grandiose expectations. Where my Patreon, so my Patreon just says we can do a video call. 
If the person is disappointed with the video call, you know what I would do? Because I'm a person of integrity, I would give them another one or I would just give them their money back. So where are you getting the information aside from the meetings you went to, right? Because the ones that you, you have meetings on cameras, which are going to give those, the, the promises, the dream, right? Because we agree. We, I told you, and this is the one thing that the anti-MLMers can't get through their heads. There is so much I agree with them on this scumbagness of the industry. And I can't stand it. So aside from those, why is it that you, th or how many um, meetings have you, uh, have you, have you uh, uh, infiltrated? To I put honestly couldn't tell you. More than 10? More than 10. More than 20? Probably. Okay, less than 50? Maybe about 50. Okay, so 50. Does 50, what do you think the percentage is of, of the 50 versus how many people are giving presentations all over in, in uh, the network marketing field? How many people do you think pitch and close every day? So I will answer that. I think the answer, you know, on Family Feud, they say we polled 100 people and this was the right. most popular answer. So I think me attending 50 meetings and each, each meeting has multiple speakers. I think me seeing all of those speakers is a reasonable enough sample size of the overall population for me to make a generalization. I don't disagree. Okay. I do not disagree and because in, it's cookie cutter. So my it's answer is 100% because in 100% okay. of those meetings, I have heard the same false wealth, deceptive earnings claims every single time. So if my 50 meetings that had 150 total speakers, speakers cumulatively is any indication of the more widespread issue, and mind you, it's not concentrated. I've done meetings in person that are here in my city. So you couldn't just say it was a citywide issue. I've done Zoom meetings that were in Atlanta, in New York, in Los Angeles, Miami, you name it. So of all of those meetings that I've attended, 100% of them have displayed the deceptive earnings claims. I would so is that, And I've also, is that as an aside to that, I have talked to hundreds of people personally who have had experiences, men and women, from experiences in multiple different MLMs who all have similar stories, who also verify the deceptive earnings claims. I have also heard from you, you one know, way, thousands of people on Reddit, on YouTube, in comments right. that I haven't talked to or corresponded with directly. Right. So when it comes, again, this is sort of the earlier thing we talked about, about me qualifying myself as an expert. How much data do I need to procure in order to satisfy your demand or your definition of me knowing because what the know fuck I'm data, talking about. I know how data can be skewed. Yeah, so I was a police officer for almost 20 Just, years. And I know, I'm going to tell you, I'm explaining it to you. So there's one vulnerable, there's one factor, there's variables when it comes down to statistics, right? I, I debate all the time on the law enforcement relationship with the black community, the statistics that are involved, all of this. The one thing that nobody ever talks about is the individual perception of everything. Now, because... I've been to these meetings and I understand it, right? I've been, I've seen that the, the scum concept of it where, oh, you're going to get, they sell the dream because that's what they're taught. It's the typical circle, line, line, and a pyramid, right? All you got to do is this. And I say all the time, just because I know how to make coffee doesn't mean I know how to run a Starbucks franchise. When it comes down to this though, do we agree? Have you ever heard the phrase perception is reality? Yeah. Okay. So does that play any factor in any decision on anything in life? Yeah. Okay. If you, you're you what 20 something years younger than me, I think I've had a little bit more dating experience than you have. Probably. I'm not going to, I'm yeah. not going to. Yeah. So do we agree that by the time you get to my crusty old ass, I'm like, all oh, women are fucking evil and all they want is your money and whatnot. And you may be an idealist. Is it a possibility still that you still have faith in the system? Oh, because of, I've of been, dating? because I've been burned less. It's right. Meaning that the time you get to me, I've been burned more, so it sucks more. You see I, where I'm I, going. I just want you to be careful going down this line of reasoning because this actually it applies. This, hold no, on. it applies because to Dominic, everything. Because Dominic, this actually works against your earlier point that I wasn't in an MLM because now you're saying that I would be more bitter and more biased if I had dated so many women who did me oh, wrong by the time I got to your age. So then it stands to reason that if I had been burned by MLMs, I would be less objective right so i just want yeah, you to be careful have, going down this perception. line because i believe this line of thinking is contradictory to the previous thing we talked no. about no it's not just because i've dated does that mean i'm an expert on marriage i've seen a ton of marriages i've seen a ton of divorces and i've dated so can i put those two things together no the ultimate line is the ultimate the, the point is again where we agree is 
there needs to be this. I wish some agency would come in and they would audit properly, right? And they would see, you know, and I don't know how you do that. I don't know what certifications need to be put in companies because the one thing we don't see is we don't see MLM companies knocking down the doors of all you influencers out there saying, come in, evaluate our systems, train our people. We don't see that. Again, separate the people from the standard of the company, which is bothersome. So if I go back to this, ultimately, it does not matter, really, when you talk about the, the, the person who's giving the, the I, I can't control what John is going to pitch at coffee. I can't control that. All I could do is go out and offer content to, con, to uh, negate what he says. Ultimately, it's always going to boil, boil down to the consumer on every single level. And you get people, and I've heard them in network marketing, if people are dumb enough to sign up for this stuff, whose fault is that? It's theirs. I've, no, my point being is, is how can you say I've, seen this, I've seen this in law enforcement where we've had the statistics do not directly reflect all of the attributes sure, from the sure, offender. Sure. But Dominic, how can you say if people are stupid enough to sign up for this industry and this is the same industry you're well, defending? Those my words. Make sure that no, make okay, sure that's. I'll give nice. you the opportunity. Rephrase what you said or repeat what you I said. I said I've heard people say that if they're stupid enough okay, to line up. Okay, okay. Those are not my words. I, I also disagree with that. I disagree with saying that people who join MLMs are stupid. I, I think, like I said before, that people who join MLMs are often only guilty of one thing, and that's that they trusted a friend. How many people do you, so we have to look at that too. What's the percent? Because none of the percentages are out there. What's the percentages of cold market and then warm market people are bringing in? It's high based on the friends and family rate, which is abysmal. They shouldn't be going to them in the first place. But that boils down to training. That boils down to pitching and recruiting. So, so again, that's going to go down to the tactic of the industry. Okay, let me, let, let, let me go on another, another plane above what we're talking about because we're talking about sort of the minutia of presenting and disclosures and things like that. I want to make a grander point, okay? I believe that what you desire – actually, I'm not going to put words into your mouth. I'm just going to say what I think. What I I'll believe, correct you, what I, be, what I believe, <laughs> what I believe, is that if people provided disclosure, real transparent disclosure, as to what people are signing up for if they join an MLM, I believe nobody would join an MLM. Further, I believe that if the industry operated exactly the way you ideally, you Dominic ideally would like to see it operate, where you tell people. The, you know, the strategies of selling warm and cold market, you sit them down, you explain what it is. I also believe the industry would be doomed. And I want to explain that. So first, I just want a quick, I don't want this to become a tangent, because I just want to make sure I'm not misrepresenting you and your ideas. Okay. In your opinion, no, and I, I disagree with you on that statement, but go ahead. On which statement? And the industry would be doomed. No, you I know, but I, I haven't explained why I think that yet. For, you, you, can't, you asked. Don't disagree yeah. yet, because I haven't even explained why I think that. I believe that your intention is good for the industry. I believe that you want the industry to be built on selling products and doing basically the Google definition, selling products and recruiting people who sell those products and you earn a commission based off of that. Is that fair to say that that's what your ideal that's vision exactly is? What the industry, that's exactly how I view the industry. Great. Is. Let me tell you why I think that wouldn't work. Okay? I'm listening. The very first thing you said when we started this was that the point of companies is to make sales, right? To turn a profit, of course. To turn a profit. Sell, make money, turn a profit. The amount you charged for it was greater than the amount you paid for it. Make money, right? In, in the year 2023, where we have such expedience available to us, Walmart, Target, Amazon, when it comes to physical products, why would a company that makes a like the products for the company you work for, or a shampoo, why would those companies, if their goal was indeed to sell stuff, why would they not want their items retailed on the biggest retailers in the world? I know the official answer to this is like you said before, they don't market. Well, they claim to not market because they would rather give the money back to their distributors. The real answer is because these companies that claim to be direct sales are anything but direct sales. How could a company that sells shampoo, which was purchased first by a distributor and then sold, how does that company even know 
whether that distributor sold those bottles to people or whether it sat in the garage. They don't know. And I think on the principles of business, any company that is not able to track sales, the most important data metric in any company of any industry ever, any company that doesn't know its own sales is doomed to fail. If you don't know your sales, how can you know what your most popular product is? I've never how heard can, of, I'm on, not familiar with companies that do this. Hold on. That, that's, that goes back to what we talked about. Hold on. I'm not familiar with reps reselling their product. That's not, a business model I, that's not a business model I've never been a part of. You yourself are in a business model where you pay for the product and, and then it's you my sell product. it. I don't, no, I don't. You don't sell it. So you just keep it in your garage I mean, and eat it. The, 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 no, I don't get anything from, I purchase. So I, every, every month I purchase my, my, my product, my supplements, if you will. Those There's are mine. One. Those are mine. Yeah. And then do you sell them? Do I, then I will actively find customers. I act as a full commission salesperson to introduce to you the product. I, I want to introduce to you value in the product to get you to become a customer or client of mine. You will then use me. I'll take your information and put in, I will sell you product that will ship to you. I don't have anything physically on hand aside from my product that I consume. And so I've never been a part of, I've never been a part of a company that does that. Amway used to do that in the seventies. I don't know if they still do that to answer your question to go back for that. That's also markup. Like, why would my company not put it on the shelves of Walmart or Target or list it on an Amazon website? They have to mark it up. They have to wind up getting, they have to rank uh, on, on their searches higher. They have, to pay, they have to pay to distribute. So then how come a shampoo MLM's products are far more expensive than a shampoo that you get at, on the shelf at Walmart if the markup is so treacherous? I haven't asked that. I don't work for that company. I don't you work that, for a company, though. Sense. And I know, the, I know the nature of the products Wait, that your just company sells. I work for a company? So that Dumb. just that goes let me, back let me just make my point here. I know the products that are sold by the company you are a representative of, and I know right. for a fact that I can get an equivalent or better product quality wise in quantity wise on Amazon. No, you you can't though. You can't for this for from a competitor. Yes. You see, and this this is where if you are, have you ever infiltrated one of my presentations? Uh, no, I've not. Okay, you're openly invited to anytime you want. But hold on, we're taste. straying, we're straying, no. Dominic, we're well, straying. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're talking product value. So isn't it my job then to provide, I, I, I drive an Acura. Is an Acura the same thing as a Honda? Why did I pay $10,000 more for my Acura than the same damn car in a Honda? I think we're straying, Dom. Uh, no, you, that's a legitimate question. I think because if you're going to say that my I'm product... I'm not saying it's not a legitimate question, but it's no, just not talking, what no, I was trying to ask you about. Value. You're talking value, and a value is a perceived concept by the consumer. I can't tell you why somebody would buy a $90 bottle of shampoo. I use fucking Zest soap. I'm a guy. Head to toe. End of story. So why are women... And this goes back to the vulnerability of women that are out there. Because if a company can charge X, Y, and Z for something, just like you can, you, you the answer to your question, because you just answer it, you can charge $200 a month for a, hey, how are you, shout out, and a phone call. So if a company is going to charge $100 for a bottle of shampoo, does that mean the market is out there for them? Is, is that not the same thing that you do? You have the consumers out there that are going to, are they saying, holy shit, ladies, you shampoo this hair, you're going to lose 100 pounds? Can I mean, I, if that's what they're doing, we have a problem. Going forward in this, can I can I request of both of us uh, a favor to the other? Can I request that going forward in this conversation, when one person says something, before the other person answers, the other person first reiterates back to the sp or initial speaker what they heard so we can make sure we're actually staying on topic and we'll hearing be here the same all, things. We'll be here all night. This is, this is available on replay. We could take notes and do a part two. Is that, that the same though? Or do we look at perceived value as, as, as a concept? See, you're talking about perceived value and I'm talking about the plausibility of direct selling in 2023 when we have Amazon. Direct selling makes up one to 2%. Is it going to be consumer's choice? Let me answer. Direct selling makes up one to 2% of all retail sales made in North America every single year. One to two percent. It is insignificant. It is an, in my opinion, an antiquated business model. Let me, 
I, I let me regale you what? with with a very what? brief story. A couple oh, of years uh, ago, I went to go sell some kitchen stools that I had. I live by myself. I never used the stools. They were basically brand new. They were in great condition. I listed them on Craigslist for forty dollars. No bites. A couple of days later, I lowered the price to thirty dollars. Still nothing. Finally, I lowered the price to twenty dollars, and I got a guy hit me up, and he said, "I'll give you ten dollars cash." I said, fine, I'm done playing chair salesman. Let me just get rid of these stools. So I set up a time and a place to meet this gentleman. When I went to go meet him at the place, he no-showed. This is an experience of direct selling that many people have dealt with at, at least at one point in their life. The idea that somebody could make a living doing this method of sales is such a ridiculous idea. I equate it to the idea that somebody is gonna come to me today and say, Marco, you know what would be a great business idea? Opening up a Blockbuster. Blockbuster doesn't exist anymore because we found a more efficient way to watch movies. You can lay in bed and press one button, thanks to Netflix. Boom, bye-bye Blockbuster. And just like Amazon, Walmart, Target, we live in cities. We don't live in rural towns like we lived many, many years ago where a vacuum salesman came and knocked at the door. And despite this, Despite the fact that direct selling is only 1% to 2% of retail sales made in North America every year, the DSA, the Direct Selling Association, reports that there are millions of people doing direct selling every year. If this was the case, where are they? Where are all these millions of direct sellers? Shouldn't they be knocking at my door every day if there was this many? Where is it? It doesn't just even it make though. sense. So even if we get past... All of the issues that you have with MLM, the people being shysty, the people saying just get two people, make a million dollars. Even if all of that was gone, again, they have to do that because the business model itself of direct selling, of me buying something and then selling it to my friends and family and actually making a living off that is such a ridiculous idea in 2023 that it is just one of the many layers in my opinion, to why multi-level marketing is complete fucking nonsense. And to me, that is a scam. If you tell people that they can make a living off something and can they? it's just objectively untrue. Can they? But no, can they make a living off of it? Are there, are there zero people making a living off of network marketing? Have you heard the saying, the exception uh, does not question. disprove the rule? Are, I are think, there people? I what is the, the percentage of people? The fact that the entire industry, this, Dom, the fact that the entire no, industry makes up 1% of you all sales in North America is thing. sort of the point. You clinging to the 1% and saying, but could you? But could you? Yeah, you could smoke cigarettes your whole life and not end up with is cancer, it but it's still probably not a good idea. Okay, so let's use your conversation then, your debate, your topic. How many companies do you think will pop up soon in the, in the internet space to, to how many more Amazons? How many more Targets? How many more do you think are going to be coming up? None. None? Okay, so how is, what is Amazon or Target or, or Walmart, what are they going to do to make sure that they get your business versus their competitor? Undercut. Undercut? What, what else? What, what is Undercut doing? What is that doing for you? It's making your price cheaper than the next competitor so that hopefully what, people will well, buy what is that you for you? Them. What is that for you? It's value for you, right? You see value in it? You're providing more margin of value to the customer if you're cheaper than the next guy. Okay, does cheap always mean valuable? No. Okay, so again, you didn't answer my question. Tangent on, it's a tangent I, on a tangent. It's a tangent on a you tangent, Dom. You're saying, not, okay, you're how not, do people well, do this? Okay, it's value. Would yourself. you describe value pause as this? Yourself. It's like, I can't even follow you. Pause yourself. Why did I buy an Acura for $10,000 more than a Honda? Was it because I was stupid and sold or because I got value in the car? Well, did I see value? Did I see value in leather seats versus uh, the upholstery seats? That I, I see a moon a roof. I think that's a given. People okay. don't typically so throw again, away ten thousand. One common, the one common denominator that you that you refuse to acknowledge is people are dynamic and different. You're living. You 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 market in a dystopian society that everybody thinks the same. Guess what? Some people like myself. We don't order shit on Target. We get up and we go to the store because I miss being around people, right? So is it more convenient? Will I probably save money? Sure. It, but the value for me, the value for me is to get up and go and doing it. I can't dictate what the value is. Ultimately speaking, to correct the network marketing space, to even it, and if it survives, it survives. If it doesn't, it doesn't, is to stop catering to the 74% of easily manipulated women who are going to fail okay, in this industry. You want to talk about women. We'll do, focus, we'll do this. We'll I'm do this. speaking. Focus. 
on the 25% who are actually making it, if it survives, great. Or educate these women who are so emotionally just bent out of shape about this industry, which is clearly a scam, and see if the industry could survive on its merit. I don't know. Can it survive? I truly believe that, yes, if people can okay. see the value in it, it's presented-wise, okay. it will. I'll, I'll, I'll address that. I'm going to address each thing you said. The first thing about was sort of a rebuttal to what I was saying about uh, direct sales and whatnot, right? You made the Acura uh, Honda comparison, yeah? Yes. Okay. And I want to address this before I go on to the demographic thing that you were talking about with women, wim women and whatever, okay? And I want to make sure that I'm giving you the respect of, of addressing each of the things in tandem. And I don't want to lose my train of thought here. I feel myself losing one of the things that I wanted to say here already. Um, you mentioned you are one of the people who likes being around people and going to the grocery store. It's funny. I find that you, it's my value. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny that you say that because actually in the final quarterly report that the CEO of Blockbuster gave to their share shareholders, they said, we are optimistic about the future of Blockbuster because our reports show that people enjoy the serendipity of going to their local Blockbuster and potentially running into their neighbor. That is, those be. nights were great. And that, that was could, my first one of my first I love those nights too. I enjoyed that a lot. Blockbuster was actually 96. 97? 96? Yeah. yeah. But I remember, I remember Blockbuster. As a matter of fact, Blockbuster is greatly tied to one of the first experiences I had with uh, earning. I, my mom promised me that if I was able to ride my two-wheeler bike without my feet touching the ground from one streetlight to another – that she would take me to Blockbuster so I could rent this Batman VHS that I rented every single time. So Blockbuster is very tied to my childhood nostalgia and my... There's an emotional nostalgia for you. Sure. Continue. My point is that obviously most people didn't agree with the CEO of Blockbuster's analysis. There are some people who did enjoy going to Blockbuster, like yourself, like myself. But unfortunately, the market responded... And capitalism prevailed, and most people opted to lay in bed and press one button with Netflix. Is, is Blockbuster gone? Yes, sir. And now Blockbuster, is Blockbuster completely gone? Uh, I think there's one. One left. One so left. Blockbuster had to adapt and yeah. change their and, business. And, and it's sort of and time. it's sort of a novelty that it even exists. It's sort of just so, but like it's a, still still in business. It had to change their business model in their view. No. You know, the fact that there is one Blockbuster in existence compared to the you know, I don't know, trillion of do trillion dollars Amazon does in business every year, I would almost venture to say that we shouldn't even count Blockbuster as being in business. Why are you devaluing negligible. somebody who wants it's to negligible. get in their car and take their kids to a nostalgic experience that's something that's for them? See, again, it's perception. Let me just make my point. Go ahead. The market responded to Blockbuster versus Netflix and Netflix won, fair and square. People would rather pay a subscription that automatically charges to their credit card, lay in bed, press one button, rather than do what the CEO of Blockbuster said and enjoy the serendipity of running into their next door neighbor. The market prevailed. There is still one Blockbuster, but can we say that in the war between Netflix and Blockbuster, Netflix won just yes or no? Of course they did. And I'm not setting you up here for a gotcha. I'm just trying to well, make my point. Not. Okay. They, they, they passed Blockbuster right. passed the fifty dollar uh, right. fifty million dollar purchase. And likewise, there are people who today would prefer to buy something from someone. There are women who, uh, you know, an older generation, they enjoyed Tupperware parties, going to their neighbor lady's house, or maybe Mary Kay. They would have little makeup parties. It's very a lot of people did prefer that. But the success of Amazon is indicative of the fact that people are going to choose convenience every single time. People choose convenience over interpersonal nostalgia, talking to strangers or neighbors at the grocery store every single time. This is why I don't believe when, you know, you had Ray Higdon on your show, when he says, oh, the future of commerce is network marketing. I think that is absolutely preposterous because Amazon exists. And while there are some people like yourself who would prefer to go to the grocery store, most people, again, 1%, 1% to 2% of all 
commerce done in North America each year is this direct selling. So this is my whole point, is that the direct selling industry claims to have millions and millions of people selling using this direct selling method. And we've already established that there's a widespread issue of getting those people in off of false promises. Even if we remove the false promises and all the issues that you have with the industry, because your whole goal is industry reform. My goal is to have the industry gone. I actually don't think that I would need to have a law passed that says no multi-level marketing. I say if they're, gonna, if they're gonna provide disclosure and be held to the business opportunity rule that every other uh, gig opportunity is held to, then I actually think I wouldn't have to do anything. I don't think any law would have to be passed. I think that direct selling would just die because people choose convenience. People do not choose to go to Mary's house or meet up with John in the parking lot to buy their protein shakes or their shampoo. Some people do, but the exception does not disprove you, the rule. You can't. You, you're, 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 why, why is it fair that you use an archaic method of network marketing to prove your point when people don't do that anymore? They're doing it all online. Because people like yourself and Ray Higdon and co are advocating no, 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 no. So you just said people go to someone's home. You still think that people do the in-home parties and they're uh, and they're they go to my house and pick up your 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 your, your protein powder, or whatever? You think people are still doing that? Read me again the definition of multi-level marketing that you started. No, no, no. I didn't say the method. Read me that again. The method. Listen to me. You think people? If I sell you my product, you physically have to meet up somewhere with me for I to give that to you? Is that no. is that? I know okay. you don't have to now. I know that multi-level marketing right. companies now do employ things like auto ship, but the point is still the same. Oh, if, the, oh, if the company's goal was to yeah, sell, why would you, you not want your, your point, item David, on exactly. Amazon or in Walmart or in Target? It doesn't make economical again, sense. Again, here's, here's how it makes economical sense for the company because you just acknowledged it. Because if Amazon, I, I've never sold on Amazon. I'm, do, you, do you have any experience with Amazon? Because I don't. No, I'm but assuming... I have Shopify. I've used Shopify. Do you pay a fee to feature your content on? Like, do you have a your own brand or product that you put on Shopify? Uh, I have like a domain where my merch goes on Shopify. Yeah. You pay a fee for that? Uh, yeah, I pay a yearly subscription service? for the domain. Yeah. Okay. So that'll be the equivalent to the fee that people get involved with network marketing. People when paying, it comes to people paying for something is not a common denominator that equates things. You may pay uh, you, to join multi-level marketing, just like you, you may pay your, to have a Shopify store. The difference is the out. Shopify store is not promising me that I'm going to make millions, nor is the Shopify store an antiquated business model. People do you, still use Shopify. That's market. why I have you just, Shopify. You just, but you just, that you just destroyed your own argument because <laughs> network marketing is moving into the non-antiquated business model. So again, for the company, okay. for the company, they're not taking you. their product, putting it, they're not putting it up on Amazon and then ha having Amazon charge their a fee and then a shipping fee and all this, right? It's all done through us. So they're skipping that step of advertising and all that goes back to that reverse advertising aspect of it. And again, uh, you just you just made a comment that just went past me. Um, they're, they're, they're moving that way. So I, I, I do, it all is going to boil okay, down to okay, who's Okay, okay, okay. Let me, let, me, let me acknowledge that. You're right. MLM companies are using things like drop shipping, which is where somebody just orders it and it arrives to them and you don't have to hold been doing that for any of 10 the years. inventory. You don't have to hold, technically you don't have to hold any of the inventory. This is true. Most don't. companies don't. And I think companies in the multi-level hey, Maybe marketing, if you would have been involved with network marketing, you'd know this. And I think companies in multi-level marketing, in the multi-level marketing industry have learned from sort of the besmirchment of companies like LuLaRoe, where these women were inventory loading in their houses, and now they found a clever way. However, you mentioned that you pay monthly. So while you are not necessarily- No, I, pay, I purchase monthly. I purchase okay, you, monthly. Sorry. So that's pay. Purchase, pay. I'm using them- Well, I'm getting a product, right? Purchase. You purchase monthly, right? Getting a product every so month, So while right? just because the merchandise isn't exactly showing up to your own place, you are still purchasing monthly, and the people- that want to buy from you. You mentioned that you're going and meeting people and building clients. So again, it's still one man versus the world type salesmanship. Whether you're knocking on doors or not and Bible thumping, which you're not doing, you are still having to contact people one on one, right? So why I, I, do you I, think you're, you're going a good spot for this? You, you're bringing up right. a good point. So 
so why does a company, the company you work for, let's say, if their goal was to make as much money as possible and sell as much product as possible, why the fuck would they be thinking the best way to do this is to have Dominic times 100,000 out here selling and just trust that that's going to work as opposed to doing what actually provenly works, Amazon, Walmart, Target, etc. Well, the company question. that I'm with is, the company that I'm with is 50, the company that I'm with is 52 years old. So, do they does it still work? Not not answering my question. No, I, I am. So if the company that you you brought up my company, Avon is 80 years old. Amway is about 80 years old. Are those companies are they are they not working with the with the business model that I they had? I think they, they work they, because they lie. I don't think multi level marketing you, is a business you think at that. all. Have, I don't again, think multi level marketing is to, even a business. It goes back to it's all going to boil down to this. You're going to see me talking to a girl, and you're going to walk up to her and go, "Don't date him. He's a lying scumbag." Because I've seen him do this to other girls. That's all it boils down to. Everything else that you're talking about has a place where it fits in. So again, when it comes down to the one thing that that this could be your generation, you guys are afraid of of actually taking on a harder challenge. All right. If you're presented, I like the challenges. I huge. One of the big reasons that I burned all my boats, I decided to go back into network marketing, is because it's the biggest damn uphill battle in the world. It's a business that's got what ninety nine percent failure rate, whatever we justify failure as. So if that's the case, am I just stupid or do I love a good challenge? And if I've seen people like Ray Higdon, Jesse Lee Ward, all the other big people out there who I know them personally, and they're not the scum everybody makes them out to be, they don't manipulate, they're very transparent. Is it that people are just afraid of fucking hard work? People are very easily taken advantage of. People are that girl at the bar that the guy picks up and she's too just drunk to admit that she shouldn't be going home with him. Then the next day she wakes up and says, I shouldn't have slept with him, so I'm going to blame him. Do we, we, these numbers don't lie. It's a female-dominated, female-manipulated society in this industry that females apparently do not have the skill to perpetuate on. So if you're going to talk about all these contexts of, it's going to, are we going to say that women, uh, should they just go point and click on Amazon, fill up their carts because they have impulse control problems that their husbands go, shit, you spent $400 last night again? So there's a common denominator in all this, which is human nature, perceived value, and fundamentally what these people want to do. Sadly, a lot of the network marketing stuff does boil down to scumbag, you know, the this, this sleazy car salesman aspects of it. That is an argument you will never get out of me. I think you bring up a really, really good point. And let me ask you this, okay? And this is not a gotcha. This is not a facetious question. I'm asking you genuinely. You got me. You got me. Go ahead. I just want you to, before you respond, just take two full seconds and just think, please. Because I want to make sure you hear me with this. You are correct. There's a 99% annual failure rate in multi-level marketing. It deserves acknowledgement, your question, about maybe people just didn't work hard enough. Before we did this... I didn't this, say that. That's not what I said. I, I'm just saying the possibility that people didn't work hard enough... Oh, deserves... no, you just, you just said I said that. So acknowledge the fact okay. that I didn't say that. Okay. And also define okay. failure because that's the one sure, thing sure, the statistics sure. do not do. Okay, okay, okay. So... I'm not going to say you said this, but the potentiality that people failed because they didn't work hard enough deserves being acknowledged. I disagree. Working hard is a different, it's, it's working hard is perception. That's, okay. that's, that's completely indicative. Okay. It's subjective. But you, you mentioned working hard. What is, what is working hard for you? Well, I don't if know. I'll ask you, you're the one who brought up that as a variable. Right. right. So, so hold so on. So let me just make, with. let me just ask my question, Dominic. Using your idea of what working hard is, your Dominic Izzo subjective opinion on what working hard is, right? You obviously do factor that into someone's success or lack thereof in multi-level marketing. Hard, okay. no, hard work, I don't. You don't factor in hard work. Hard work? No, hard work is subjective. The quality no, of stop, the work is what I factor in. Your, yeah. your, yes, I'm asking you to use your subjective yeah definition of hard work what you perceive as hard work i'm asking you that to you does that factor into someone's success in multi-level marketing your your definition of hard work my definition of hard work of, of course because you okay. look at certain people. great so your definition of hard work and this is fair because we all only see the world through our own eyeballs so everybody's everybody's sure so everybody's definition of hard work is subjective to them i'm just asking you to use your own perspective 
using your own subjective opinion of what hard work is, and we know that MLMs have a 99% failure rate annually. I looked up before this, the statistic about gyms and the failure rate around gyms. You mentioned that you used to have a gym and it didn't mm -hmm. work out. So did you just not work hard enough at your gym? No, mine was I gave away the house. So I would not charge people to keep it open. So my business model was YouTube paid for the gym that I had. I had a 2,700 square foot gym that was a mile away from a big box gym. There was no way I could outcompete it. So at the time, YouTube was supplementing all the overhead for the gym cost. And I was using that gym as a space to make more YouTube videos. That was fundamentally the business model. It was just easy. That being said, when people would come in and they would uh, 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 not have the money to train, I would allow that. Over time, uh, I was very new at the YouTube game. Algorithms, analytics would start to fall down, and that income would start to just yeah. drip down from YouTube. So that supplementation right. went away. I went. I right. got underwater, and my gym yeah. failed from that. And I know what you're talking about. There was the ad apocalypse. I think around 2013, they started limiting how much you could make off ads. YouTubers weren't making as much, right? So my yeah, question then is, why didn't you just work harder? Why didn't you just make more YouTube videos to make more money to supplement that? Define, define the harder part. Well, it's subjective. Of it. It's my opinion. I don't. I, I personally, Dom. I personally think you didn't work hard enough. I think that you saying YouTube wasn't paying you as much is an excuse. That was never. But that was never a statement I made, though. So you keep bringing that up to me. Where have I said somebody That's just needs what I to work think. harder? That's just what I think. I think you didn't work hard enough. That's your perception. That's your reality. But I've never accused anybody of that. Right. So would you disagree with that? With my perception of reality? Would I disagree with your perception? No, because it's yours. I have no right to. So Aaron, you, did, so you would take, no, hang on. So you would take you no issue you with me that? saying you didn't work hard enough, in my opinion. Did you take? I think your you generation take, actually was. I think your generation actually generally was too entitled, and they didn't work hard enough. And I think you're part of that. You wouldn't take any issue with me saying that. You wouldn't dispute oh, that in any way. I just, I'm not sensitive. It doesn't bother me. So it's a did matter you, of you being sensitive to disagree take, with me. Did you take any offense, or did you look at Erin when she said she was working 24-7 and she pissed away $90,000 in her business? Did your eyes roll once, or did you go, poor Erin, you're just a victim of a system? I actually don't think I did either, and it's on video. Oh, you didn't hold her feet accountable to anything. Never once did you look and say, holy shit, you were this dumb. You're right, dumb because the point, the point is that I don't think it is a matter of hard work in an MLM. I think the system oh. is set up to fail you. Again... How is that system set up to fail if the system is sell, recruit, sell, recruit? How is the physical system? Right. So well, you, obviously, you? you obviously understand very well, and you obviously are not one of these 35 to 45-year-old women, and you obviously are from a generation that works harder, and you obviously do you hold yourself to a higher standard of hard work due to your martial arts and policing background. So that must mean, right, that you are one of the most successful network marketers in the world then. Yeah? Do you perceive me as to be? I don't think so. Are you a millionaire? Is that your standard again? Are we going back to the millionaire? Sure, I'll, I'll give you. I'll, I'll use that as my minimum. Are you a oh, millionaire? Not a millionaire. Not a okay, millionaire. Okay, so what so the hell? Well, the, so you you keep falling back on the emotional argument. It's not emotional, Dom. It's if very you work emotional. So, if you work so hard and you've been in this industry you a decade, up hard. if you work you so hard, hard and you're in the industry a decade and you hold yourself who to this higher up, standard, why aren't you a millionaire? Who brought up, who brought up hard work? Why? See, you're you're avoiding the argument. Why again. are you a millionaire? You keep going back to the emotional argument. Why are you scamming women who are vulnerable into watching your content versus taking money out of the mouths of people like Aaron B's? If women are so stupid and they just can't do the business, how come you yourself are not a beacon of success for the business? Comparative to what? What's Let's, my success? Rate? You know what? I'll play by your rules. I'll play by your I'll play by your rules here. I'll play by your rules here. If you look you at tell, you tell you me, at hold on, my rate, hold on, hold on. Rate? Yes, I am. I, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you make the rules of this game. Right. You tell me someone in the MLM industry who you believe is successful. Tell me the approximate amount of money you think they have. Let's use that as the benchmark for success, and then you can explain to me why you're not that. That's, why you're not there? That's, that's again. That's gonna be on percent. Why, why am I gonna? That's where you get wrong. Why am I comparing? Their success, are we going off of their team volume? Are we going off of the income that they bring in? Are we going everything, off of- Everything, everything, all of it, all of it, everything. Factoring in all variables, factoring in all variables, factoring in all variables, factoring your gender, the generation you were in, the person who your team was, et cetera, et cetera. Factoring in all variables that we've touched on in this discussion. 
Tell me, in your mind, think of someone who you perceive to be a success in MLM. Why are you not equally, if not more successful? Go. You keep falling back on an argument that's emotional because you it's can't a question. make a point anywhere else. Now, your, question, your question keeps deriving. So again, you keep going back. You're, you're avoiding a lot of points by talking about a subjective standard. <laughs> what exactly? I'm only using right. the same. I'm only using the same tactic you used when accusing all these women of being too stupid. No, did I accuse the women of being too stupid or ill-equipped to doing a position that they got suckered into? Ill-equipped because why? They have a vagina. It, did you say that or did I say that? So you if don't. It does, wasn't, you don't if that's not what you were saying, why even mention that they were okay. women at all? Because it's in the statistic. Is it not? Marco, you can't be this, you can't. Okay, so, so, Mark's so does it no. matter that they're women or does it not? It 100% matters. And it you're matters. Stop so you're not a woman. So why aren't Marco, you, why aren't you the success you. that you think of when you think of success in you an MLM if you're not a, a woman? You got to stop for a second because don't forget, you're manipulating the same women audience that you're accusing other people of not doing, right? The concept, no. like I said, if you love these statistics so much, Marco, then explain to me. Whatever your definition of failure rate is in the network marketing industry, right? 99% failure, and you haven't defined that yet. What is failure? Is it the Aaron B's? Do we have hundreds of thousands of women who have pissed away $90,000 a year to keep their business going? You have to establish a standard, number one. Number two, if out of 100 people who are involved in network marketing across the nation, let's just say it capped off there, there's no more than 100 people, 74 of them are women, and it's got a 99% failure rate, are we not going to look at the problem and say, is there a skill set that women don't or do have? Or, are you gonna, or is your generation going to go, we need to be sensitive of, uh, of feelings and not talk about You know this. what? I agree. I agree okay, that this on. generation that I am in is... Fact, is... You're not, I'm not done. I'm not sorry. done. Let me finish. Sorry, sorry. Furthermore, let's circle back to you. You have zero experience in the network marketing industry, and you capitalize off of the predominant female audience which makes up of anti-MLM people who are all your age. 99% of them are your age. So they come from that emotional aspect of it. You revamp your entire brand to target people because it's shooting fish in a barrel this way. You put out superior. So basically you're saying, damn, you've got 56,000, 57,000 subscribers. I think the CC Suarez is above you. Maybe a couple others aren't, but all these other women that you're aligning with and you're draining their audience from because you're having them come on to your content. So their audience will do, you're manipulating from these women. So are you saying these women are so stupid that they're seeing a young, good-looking, attractive, well-spoken, charismatic man because marketing is essential and they're going to filter into your content? Don't fucking say for one second that I said because women are stupid, they're not in the business of being successful. What they are is they're being manipulated. We agree on that. We agree on the fact because you said it. Well, there's so many factors for women out there. They're postpartum depression. So are you saying that a woman's hormonal dump that decrease how much money she's going to make her husband and his supporter, his not support the kids. So we saying that what, I mean, shit, the feminists would love to hear what you're saying because you're making excuses for why women can't be successful in network marketing. When the statistic shows that you love to use 74% of the people who are involved in this industry and make up 99% of the failure rate are females. You want to tell me that I said they're stupid Number one, I expect okay. an apology. Number two, I expect you to revamp your argument and address that issue. Okay. I apologize. You didn't say that. And I'm going to, as a matter of fact, agree with you on a couple of things. The first is, I do agree with you that the generation I li live in or that I'm part of and younger is generally softer. I do believe there are a lot of people out there who would be, who would do well to simply pick themselves up by their bootstraps, stop complaining and stop uh, you know, I believe there's a social contagion in my generation of it's trendy to identify with a mental illness of some sort or, you know, misery loves company, like you said before. I'll agree with you on that, okay? If anything, that only stands to show how people are more easily taken advantage of. I see all the time people in MLM companies saying, there's never been a better time than now. And they've been saying this since the beginning the of time. All the time. And they will find a new reason every single time. In 2008, it was the financial crisis. They said, well, you can't rely on your job. They might lay you off. Here's an opportunity. During COVID, they said, it's COVID. Thanks. Everyone's l being laid off. Here's an opportunity. And that will continue. P scammers will 
use every 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 opportunity they have. Right. I also would disagree that I am in some way manipulating my audience. The fact that there is a certain demographic that my content appeals to does not equate to manipulation. If I was a K-pop star and most of my fans were like young Korean women or young white women, does that mean I'm manipulating them because those happen to be the people that like my content the most? I think that's ridiculous. And instead of us going back and forth and trying to draw from other people's experiences who aren't here, it's only me and you who are here. And you're also right. I have no you experience. You feature them on your content. And you feature yes. them, you, you yes, leverage yes, yes, them yes. on your content. But to for, further the, your for the present moment, for the sake of this, it's just it doesn't me. matter. You, you, sure, okay, you, you okay, keep okay. talking about how other people's skill sets for presenting. So it's just me. If that was the case, you would only talk about my pitching uh, skills, my recruiting skills. But you talk about how the standard is the manipulation. So you can't use that for your defense. Okay. My point here that I'm trying to make is let's not hold, let's not use other people's examples. I have you here now, and I'm going to use that opportunity to ask you about your experience because you're right. I haven't been. Well, it's a little, it's two hours late, isn't it? I haven't been in, in an MLM. You're correct. What? Instead of ask, instead of speculating about the factors that lead to people's failure in MLM, let me just ask you, Dominic, about success. Why aren't you successful in MLM? Why am I not successful in MLM? Am I not successful to your standards? No. I pay, I pay my bills with network marketing. It's my main source of income. Am, am I not successful? So that sort of harkens back to your previous question about what, is, what does loss mean? You say you pay your bills. If paying your bills is success to you, then could we, could we go off that and say that not being able to pay your bills is less than success? It depends. What's the, what's the household? Again, you got to go with all the variables. I'm a single household with no kids, right? My bills are, are, are X, Y, and Z. Are you it's defining relative, that? Though. Bills are bills. Everybody has bills, whether you have 10 no, kids it's or not zero. Relative. It's not relative. It's not you're, relative. You're, 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 Paying your bills is not relative. People have less. Again, you get, you get, shut up. <laughs> when you, when you ask a question, shut the fuck up. And okay, when you wind up going out there and you have a well, dual income home, Right? Dual income home, right? And are you kids? <laughs> what are the ratio for the bills they're paying, right? So there's all these factors that are going back and forth. Again, you got to keep going back on that aspect of it. So it's, it's you define failure. That's, that's where I don't, the statistics I okay. read. To, is to, that, to, I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give it to you. Failure is that you lost more money than you earned. I haven't. Okay. So that's your definition of success then. You pay your bills and that's you've yours. made more that's money your, than you've lost. Uh, I'm asking you. I'm asking you, well, Don. You know, you just said you just said failure is you lost more I'm money than you I'm asking you, you to you, is success making more than you lose and paying your bills? I would 100% agree so, yes. Okay. So if that's success and most people don't achieve that, is that the people's fault for, for not reaching that very low bar? Or is it the industry's fault? It's the people's fault. Okay. Why would it not be? So let's talk about this women aspect of it. You, you, do, you do all the same standards towards brick and mortar businesses, right? Where why did my gym fail? Because it was my fault. The gym industry still is around. So it's in the business model is ridiculous. People are still showing up, paying. So the business, business you, pay, you, you have to pay to use the space. If I bring you in... I recruit you and you pay, they're going to give me a discount of maybe a six months off of a membership. So I've got an incentive to do that. Why are those business models still around just to use equipment? And I'll, why did I fail? I'll answer. Because it was my fault. I'll answer. There's many, there's multiple reasons as to why the comparison doesn't hold up. Firstly, running a gym or having success in the gym, or, you know, you mentioned marriage too. This applies to marriage. It applies to pro basketball. Any of the things that you guys in your industry use to say, well, X amount of people in this industry fail. Is that industry a scam? Here's the difference. You cannot name me another industry where there is a high failure rate that is A, even comparable to 99% loss rate, B, where you have to pay monthly for the opportunity to do it, C, where it actually does not depend on your level of effort. You know, marriage, basketball, running a gym, those actually do at least partially depend on your level of effort. You also don't have to recruit people when you get married. You don't have to recruit other couples to factor into whether your marriage is going to be successful or not. Same with basketball, whatever. And you, always, you, you keep harping on... Uh, I'll change the comparison then. 
Okay. You so keep, you're not a real, real estate. Real estate. I agents. love that. So you had a short stint with real estate in 2020, 100%. correct? So Ask tell me, me about that. Money. So it, it, I, I did not do it. I passed, got my license, the thousands of dollars I had to spend, the fees I had to pay. Yep. No leads. Yep. Full generation. Yep. Full recruiting people for uh, 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 referrals. So we're, and then the percentage that I would have to split with another realtor and in house. So now there's, there's going to be some differences, but does that not align with everything you just said? It cost me far more money. It cost me thousands of dollars to be a realtor without even making a dollar. So I love that you asked this. This is, well, what hang on a second. is that because the industry is horrible or because I sucked as a realtor because you sucked as a realtor and I'll explain, there you go. I'll explain, go I'll explain. In real estate, and this is the the strongest actual comparison that your industry has because there are the most similarities between real estate and MLM. There are key differences, though, that make one a scam and not the other. In real estate, when you become a realtor, you do have to pay for those uh, learning materials and whatever. That's because, just like we talked about earlier, being an open heart surgeon, you're held to a higher standard because it's life and Licensed. death. In real estate, you're, you're held to a higher standard because that's where people are actually going to live. There's appraisal processes. There's inspections. It is a very regulated, diligent industry, okay? So you have to pay for your education and whatnot, licensing. When it comes to the actual commerce of real estate, however, you are selling an actual thing. You are selling a house. The commission you earn on that house is not determined by how many other realtors you have under you. You also don't have to buy a house every month unless, in order to qualify the for the opportunity broker. to be a realtor. Right. But what about the managing broker? The managing broker is trying to sell houses at a rate that satisfies the market demand. In real estate, the market is volatile. It's always fluctuating. People, it becomes a buyer's market. A couple years later, it's a seller's market. Does so the, the broker- broker have people underneath them? The difference is that in in real estate, it's not a managing broker. I'm answering. I'm answering. The managing broker has people underneath them, and there is a hierarchy, much like there is a hierarchy at McDonald's. There's the owner, there's the manager, the assistant manager, and so on. The difference is, it is not an endless chain where you are constantly recruiting your own competition, who's going to dilute the workforce and make it unfeasible that you would sell to anyone. If in my city of a million people, where I live now. There was half a million realtors because all the realtors were so prudent on recruiting new realtors. You can imagine that most of them probably wouldn't make any money, right? That's the difference. So is real estate a scam? No. So, so if it's, if the, so there's, there's a capped limited number of people who are going to be successful in the industry, right? Again, this is a false equivalence. No, yeah. no, no. Are they, as the, if you have a hundred thousand people in your town, and there's going to be there's going to be a limited number of people who are going to be successful in that industry. Is that correct? In any industry, the people who is earn that, the most yes, no. are always yes, going is to that, be a minority. No. You, just, you just said that, correct? Yes. In is any the, industry, okay. the people who but earn the most will always the case, be the minority. And if that's the case, why do real estate schools still charge for licenses? Why do they still get? I already classes answered that. Why? I already explained. They didn't. Yeah, the I said actual, don't, don't, the actual company. The actual, if you know. The year market is going to get tapped out in your area, and I move there, and there's 500 realtors, and it's just I, if I get involved in the industry, I'm not going to make any money because the market's so saturated. Doesn't that real estate school have an obligation to say, Mr. Rizzo, the market is capped, and we're going to put you on a waiting list in five years when one of these agents steps out and their license gives back up, we'll accept your application then to go forward? Should they not have an obligation to do that? That's a great question. In real estate. It does depend in large part upon your ability. Perhaps you, Dominic Izzo, know people who are in the market to buy or sell a house and the brokerage, the current people employed at that brokerage don't you. have that. So in that case, you would actually you. have an advantage. Real That's estate, not what I real asked estate you. brokerages are not recruiting. You're, you're avoiding and, and the listen. question. You're avoiding the question. Go ahead and does ask the, the question entity, again. Does the entity that license, that takes the application, puts you through school, should do they have an obligation to say, "Hey, here's Caldwell Banker. They serve a town in an area, a county, of fifty thousand people. They've got a thousand agents. Each one of those agents has a, a district. We know that if we have a new class of people coming in, and there's going to be twenty new people in this class, that they're all going to pay a thousand dollars to get their license. Then that once they get their license, they're going to go to Caldwell Banker. Caldwell Banker is going to gladly say yes." 
We'll take your fee. We'll put you in the MLS. We'll get you all the materials. We'll get you your cards, your signs, all this, knowing there's not a fucking chance in hell that any of those realtors are going to make any money because Kathy Lee has been here for 20 years, and she's really got the market corner from referrals. Yeah. Doesn't the managing broker and the school that licenses them, don't they have an obligation to warn these people? Or fuck them. It's capitalism. Let's take their money. How is that not a scam? Great question. Great point. You are correct on a couple things. Real estate, very volatile, very difficult market. A lot of people who even end up getting their real estate license and joining a brokerage will never sell anything. That is a really good point. However, when it comes to the disclosure, and I know this because I actually did take my real estate licensing course when I was 20 years old, in those materials, in those big textbook sized things, at least where I live, it did explain in black and white English that success in real estate is never guaranteed and it is a volatile up and down market it is affected by limitless factors regarding the economy uh geography you name it you name it um the text said that marco right the text did but the, the text says that won, also it did also and here's a key difference and he, marco, no, I'm, you're I'm still answering i'm still answering i'm still answering you're, i'm still you're, answering you're losing this one bad no, but I'm, I'm still i'm still answering when you when i signed up to get my real estate licensing there was nobody there who had a smile that looked me in my eyes and said, bro, you get a couple realtors and you're going to make a million dollars. I was, I knew there was disclosure in the fact that somebody didn't mislead me. And there was also plain black and white English disclosure in the text of the book, right. of the training materials again, that told me it was a risky white, game. Is there, you don't is see there a difference? Black and white? No, it, no, again, I, and I don't know this. I know that it is with my company. It goes back to the income disclosures. Are those available for network marketing companies? Uh, repeat the question. Are, is that black and white disclosure of this is what the percentage of you're going to make you know, in, in network marketing? Is that same disclosure and information available with the corporations on their websites or materials with network with, marketing? With network marketing? Yes. It is available, but it's not disclosed okay. usually. And okay. unless people go and look yeah, it up, they don't see it. You can't. You can't. You're, you're an extremely intelligent man. You can't see where you're diverting off of this. You go to a real estate class and it says flat out, this is the volatility, volatility of the market. This is where you're not guaranteed to make money. You're going to have that parallel disclosure, uh, disclosure on the, anti, um, or the network marketing site, right? The MLM site. Now, all of a sudden, what happens if you went to a, a, uh, you know, a, a school that the guy's teaching you, he's in, he's in a shark skin you know, uh, blazer and he's got a tan and his teeth are capped. You just happened to come across somebody who had integrity. Wait a second. Does that mean that people in the business could come across people like me who have integrity? So now, is it the industry of real estate that's a scam because nobody stopped you from doing what you want to do? Because maybe you went in believing, I'm, if somebody, I'm going to make a million dollars a year uh, uh, doing, uh, doing real estate. If somebody was somebody to come up and say, no, you're not going to do that or X, Y, and Z. You're going back to every time you want to make the argument for network marketing being, it is the industry... You're identifying the industry as the people who are pitching and closing. Once again, you and I agree fundamentally, the scumbags in this industry are insane. But when it comes down to real estate or anything else, you won't ever admit that there are scumbag people in those other industries. So fundamentally, of course the, there definition, are. the definition for industry, definition for industry in my business is people. When we come down to YouTubers, the definition for industry doesn't seem to be people because if that was the case, we have to go back to you refuse to put down written disclosure on your content that you were never involved in an industry that you're teaching in the first place. My so YouTube again, channel, Dom, is not a business opportunity that I'm advertising to people to join in. It's not you my, YouTube, from people? my YouTube channel is not a, a business opportunity. That's your one caveat. Are you still transacting it's business on It's the most on important that? caveat. Are you still? It's still, are you transacting income on there? Are people paying you? Yeah, we established okay. this, bro. Do you, do you not have an obligation? So we're, it's all comes down to scumbagness. Okay, scum and, and let me just give you the courtesy you, here. You, Hold on, I want to remember. I want to remember you, before you, you go off. You can fully disclose back on your content, integrity, and, and, and the verb of beverage that you are not involved in this industry. There are scumbags in every industry, I agree. And I cannot think of anything that is legally sold that does that is harmful to people that does harm to a majority of people that doesn't disclose it when you buy cigarettes there's a warning on the label when you buy alcohol there's disclosure even mcdonald's yeah. has nutrition labels on the boxes for the food only multi-level marketing as far as i know is something where people are likely to lose their money and end up having a bad experience that doesn't 
come forward and disclose upon purchase. Does, that, well, does McDonald's say that, does they say high percentage of, I don't know if you're old enough to remember this. When I was younger. McDonald's shows the, the nutrition the, facts. Nutrition, but it doesn't say there's a high probability you will gain weight, become obese, get type two uh, diabetes or become uh, a cancerous. When I was younger, on sweet and low packages, you may not remember this, it used to say causes uh, cancer in laboratory rats. They disclosed that. So here it is, back in the 1970s and 1980s for your coffee, fucking A, sweet and low says causes cancer in laboratory rats, and it's still around today. People still consumed it. So you could say McDonald's is going to have 3,000 grams of carbohydrates in one of their cheeseburgers, and I know that a carbohydrate threshold is going to wind up causing type 2 diabetes. But it doesn't say on there consumption of carbohydrates is going to lead to type 2, or could potentially lead to type 2 diabetes. Cigarettes is the only one that says may increase risk of cancer. So that's the only error, that's the only error where you get to, uh, pass on that argument. So, so disclosure is good then? Of course it is. So I'm then, so then we will agree. So then we will agree that when someone goes and attends a one-on-one -on -one or a group presentation for an MLM, and they don't, not only are they not told the statistics on income disclosure, they're not given disclosure, they're told the opposite, that they're going to make money. And that is generally what happens. How, how do you not come to the conclusion that it is an industry-wide issue, even though there are people like yourself who have good integrity, who don't mislead people. How can you look at, I don't know what percentage you would want to use. For me, it's a 100% uh, number of all the times that I've seen presentations and all of the times that they have misled people. It is a one-to-one -one ratio. Industry. So how do you how not many, come to the conclusion, Dominic, the that it's a systemic issue? Please answer what's that. The what's, the, what's the percentage of good police officers you've come in contact with pieces of shit versus pieces of shit? The bad ones are the minority. Just like in most industries, the bad Where? ones are the minority. In real estate, the bad ones are the minority. In fast food, the bad ones are the minority. And on and on and on and on. So in now, MLM, so now it's getting, not the minority. Define bad. define bad because now you're getting subjective, right? So again, if you're, if you're going to be pitching, right, and you look at all... You see, the one thing that you really never touched on when you bring these people in who are crying anti-network marketing is... You never talked about what got them so attracted to doing the business in the first place. They all say the same shit, time, freedom, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. They never talk about anybody who made them feel special and important. And that's the manipulation factor, right? So if it's well, that aspect that's already it, there because it's their friend or family member that's presenting it to them. Yeah, so there's already those attachments. You don't, you don't know that. You, Generally, you, that is the case. General, we don't know that. Well, I've, we talk, I've, I've heard from thousands of people and I, that's my sample size. I've you, heard from that, thousands of people. You have a measurable number. You heard from thousands of people in your comment section. Yeah, in my you... comments, in my DMs. It's been four okay. years I've been doing this. Right. Again, so that's going to be completely subjective because you haven't done any study. You haven't broken down one on one. You're taking it at face value for what these people say. I've read books. I've attended presentations. I've talked to people who are actually in the companies. I mean, aside from me going in and losing money myself because I didn't work hard enough. What more do you want me to do? You keep, to, you keep coming back to okay. that argument. What more do you want me to do, Dominic, to qualify myself on this topic? Admit that you are you have no experience in the topic. And I've then been I, honestly, admitted that I never was in an MLM admit, a thousand admit, times. Admit it and also admit that the tactics you use are the exact same ones that you are condemning in network marketing. No. You are, you are deceiving. No, I'm not. By omission. Hey everyone, I have never been in an MLM. Please unsubscribe to me if you please unsubscribe. You to... Please unsubscribe to me and send me an email asking for your money back if you've supported me. If you feel that I've misled oh, you, Marco, you don't have to go that way. Do you are you open to putting a disclaimer on all of your video content beforehand and then putting in the the about section that you have never been involved in network marketing and all of your okay. views or your opinions and, and whatever experience you're limited to? Are you willing to do that? Okay, and, and just a follow-up question to that. Do you, what is the thing you think that's going to accomplish? What it does is credibility because Julie Joe or... Oh, my uh, God. Oh, hang on. See, why is this, why is this emotionally just difficult for you? Just talk to me about understand? me and you. And I'm, get, I'm getting to it. I'm answering your question. So if... if it, I'll, use this, I'll use this example instead. You know who Officer Brandon Tatum is? No. Okay, he's a, he's a very, very high sensational, uh, hundreds of thousands of followers on social media. The guy was a cop for three years. I was a cop for almost 20 years. We have a completely different experiential level, right? So value and perception and ability to convey material is going to greatly differ. 
if he put that content out there, if you were going to be shopping around for who should I look at to study for X, Y, and Z, oh, here's the experience of one person, here's the experience of another person. If you look at Julie Jo, she's got, she has openly said she's made it to the top to, uh, 2%, top 3% of her company. Jessica Hickson, $25,000 a month, I believe, earner in her company. Uh, Aaron Bees, again, even on paper, she made $100,000 a, a, a month, a year. All of those women come with a level of expertise, exp expertise that they did that you didn't. Is How is that not deceptive where you do not disclose okay, that information? I'll answer. Go ahead. It's not deceptive that I don't give a disclaimer, Dominic, because I am not a business person opportunity being presented to people my friend no you're, you you are asking for you are i'm not offering. asking for dick it's optional so and then also you need to then you so why well let me ask you a question why won't you do it why are you so hell-bent on if you're marco always marco anti-mlm content which bro. again is just no 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 bro don't bro me go ahead we're always we're coming back to the concept of integrity <laughs> integrity is everything yeah you want to you're vilifying your fundamental argument, which you and I will never disagree with, is there's a massive lack of integrity that people are just not being taught on properly. So I'm asking you, if you change, if you change your entire business model for your YouTube, your content is gone, right? You're no more rapping, no more stand-up comedy. You found a niche that works that you weren't involved in, but you read a book on and you went to some meetings for and you experienced seven years ago. Are you willing to put that information in a disclaimer on every video going forward, showing that you're going to give people the opportunity. There's the other question. Should people have the opportunity to say, I could trust Marco. He did this before he failed. Or do they have the, should they have the opportunity to say, you know what? It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He, you know, he didn't do the industry. I still want to hear what he has to say based on his content. Are my you going to give people that opportunity? My answer is, if I gave the disclosure, the disclaimer, you think that would achieve what exactly? I think that would show integrity. And you think currently without having the disclaimer, because I never was in an MLM, it lacks integrity. Yes, consider the fact that you're, you are proposing yourself off to be an expert in the anti-MLM field. My answer is no. And I'm, I want to give you the courtesy of explaining. Are you worried that you will lose audience if you do that? No, quite the opposite, actually. I think if I put a disclaimer at the beginning of my videos, it would actually only hurt my click-through rate and make people uh, click off quicker because the first three seconds of a video are the most important. Are you, but are you, you don't, you know how that goes. That, that's actually a lie. You do exactly what you do, which is you open up the video with 15, 20 sets of content, and then you put that in because everybody else does. Every, okay. every other, okay. so why are you not playing with the same rules that every sure, other sure. anti MLM player is I, doing? I'm, I'm going to answer. You're, I'm going to answer. Hold yeah, on. Let me write explain it down. Why, explain why it's fair. Explain why it's fair for all of these women to put out their experience and they all gravitate towards you as a supporter because all you are is a harumpher. You're just, you're just well, fluffing I mean, up exactly I'm just, their I'm just one voice. I'm not why the king you, of anti MLM. I'm not the emperor of this, in, of this niche. Your, your banner. Your banner is always Marco anti MLM. Yeah, I'm a guy. That is the premier, but that's premier, so that's exactly what you're marketing okay, okay. yourself as. Can we? You're doing the same thing as the MLM people you hate. Can, can I? I do want to. I'm not. This is not me ducking out of the question. I'm gonna explain. Fine. But can we do a pee break? Can we go to the washroom? Let's. Um. What do, What else do we have to cover? Uh, what else do we want to cover? Because I we're gonna be going around in circles in this. So. I, I understand. I'm not going to accept any answer you say sure. that comes down to why you won't. I actually think it's it's a lack of integrity that you are competing against women who are putting out the same content that you won't show them the respect of. Hey, I didn't go through what you went through. I need to disclose that. And you and it's also a disrespect to your people by saying because. If I did not say on my content, which I've said, I'm not a millionaire in network marketing yet. Well, shit. So, don't so, you think? I, so, so, Dom, it's, think it's not I enough of a. Dis it's not enough of a disclosure for me to in my videos many times before and even right now in front of 700 no, because people you admit it. No, say because that you I was never in a company and this is my background. No. Like I've said it in several no, because, videos, bro. So is it, is it, so wait a second. So then it means that isn't it okay that maybe out of 10 presentations that I do, five of them, I tell people you're not going to make a million dollars in the first two years and the rest of them, I'm, I'm not. I'm not held to that standard because I'm not a business exactly. opportunity recruiting people and telling them they're going to make money de, with my and channel. Demonetize your, then demonetize your channel. I are you to willing? Make, to, I want are to you make willing? money. No. I want so to make money making, using the rules money that are in off. place legally. You're making money I'm off not, of deception. Embrace the fact that you are good with deceiving people then. 
and you're doing the okay. exact thing that you accuse others of doing. I'm deceiving my bladder right now by holding my pee in. So can we go to the well, – can we do a break? Can we we'll, do a we'll, two-minute we'll break? This. It's, it's 1030 my time. Okay. We have to – let's close this out. We agree. Well, the one other thing is, I wanted yep. to talk about was the uh, – in, in your most recent video – uh, reacting to me and Aaron's video, you talked about how MLM is not a pyramid scam, but it is a pyramid scheme. And scheme is just a word. Scheme is just a word that you use for system. And I want to talk about that because I have a follow up question. Can I go pee? Oh, you can't go pee because I got to pee too. And we're going to end this. No, out. let's let's yes. both go. You're, you're, let's your take two minutes. Your, your listeners can sit there and look at the definition. I have now to pee, bro. I'm going to pee my pants. One thing is a, it's I have <laughs> to end my night. I'm going to end my night. We could, we'll do a part two for this. Sure. Okay, we'll do part two. We'll schedule that. I think, and I'm going to tell this to your people, and I've told this to you privately. I'll tell this to you then publicly. I think you are an unbelievably intelligent young man. Thank you. I think you have a ton to offer. I think your content really does hold the feet of those like me over the coals to have more integrity and to hold a higher standard of this business. I, I want to fight to change this industry. That's my goal. And I would hope that you would go, hey, man, you got a big fucking battle. You're probably not going to win, but I support you. I hope that if you're truly if you're truly in the industry to change the industry, that you would want me as an ally. On your end of it, I would expect some integrity. That instead of, because the one thing you don't do is you don't add homonym that much. You can get to be a little bit of a cocksucker in some of your comments. <laughs> but, but in the totality of this, I support what you're doing. I think that you've got one of the better channels, regardless of whether you haven't had any experience on it, but there's going to be some human factors that you miss out on. I would like to see you do as disclaimer that you have not sat there and been involved in the industry. And that honestly, that I think would give you more credibility that you would gain more allies in our industry to help you with your cause. That's that. So for all of your audience, I think you're actually very, very, very talented at what you do. I think you have a bright future. I support what you're doing. And this conversation this, this is a good conversation because you're able to be very intelligent. Sometimes you're disingenuous, but, you know, it is what it is. So thank you. We will do a follow-up for this. I appreciate it, Dom, and I appreciate you having this uh, conversation with me. One of the things that we didn't get to was, you know, us being able to have this majority respectful exchange. I, I, I thought this was fun. Uh, started because I had an emotional response the first time you reached out to me. I'm not. I'm gonna hold the accountability for that. I didn't like the way that you came at me initially, which is why I had that response. And it was also which I just sent you a video, right? All I did was send you a video. Again, I, I it, I'll take accountability. I was not in the place to receive the the criticism at the time, so I apologized. I would hope you're that a stand up man. I hold I yes. hold a high high trim. I hold I hold you in high respect. I really do. I told you that personally. I'll tell you that publicly. I do find a lot of value in what you do. I I respect you very much. I appreciate that. I would also hope, this is my hope, that in the future, this can happen. Um, I apologize to you because I saw that as the only way forward. And I, I agree with the utopia you're discussing where we become allies. I think that's p possible. Obviously, that would be the ideal rather than having more people shitting on each other and making mean, nasty videos about each other. I obviously think that's, that's the healthier alternative. Being that it is, you talk so much about integrity and your generation being more respectful, hardworking, et cetera. Would I, you I've be, never brought my generation up. You've never brought your generation up? Uh, not, in, not in context like this, no. You, you brought it up during this stream. I don't recall what it was, but I did. Particularly for network marketing, I don't bring my generation up. I do for political reasons. I, I Dom, if you promise to not go delete your videos off your channel, I could send you several videos from your Instagram and your YouTube, including this stream, where you, talk about, where you talk about your generation when it comes to MLM. Specifically, you've said things like, is it, I'm from a different generation where we work hard. Is it, is it, uh, is it that network marketing is bad or is it that these people just don't work hard enough? You have said things to those. To, okay, to if that I've said that, then I've said that, sure. Okay, so. I agree, I agree with that statement. My hope is that. I didn't know if I, I, didn't know if I ever leveraged it though. So you, feel that, so, so you do feel that this is a, has been a, a productive, respectful conversation. And the point I'm making here is that this came about because of me extending the olive branch and apologizing and trying to find common ground with you. I hope, yes. that, you, I hope that you saw that that's been an effective approach. And so in the future, I hope you could find it in yourself for the sake of unity, for the sake of becoming allies, to perhaps display the same grace to some of the people in the anti-MLM community who you've said – 
less than nice things about and be not willing, a and be willing to apologize to them. Not. Absolutely you would, not. You wouldn't apologize to anyone else? You wouldn't apologize absolutely. to Aaron or Julie Joe or not. anyone else? No, absolutely not. Because they all they were the ones who made the... I, I give what I've gotten. That's so, it. Got so I, I, have, I have two nieces as well. You talked about having two nieces. And when they fight and I go to break it up and one of them says, well, she started it. I don't really accept that. And that's kind of what you're doing right now. But I, but I'll hang on. I don't fucking apologize to any one of those other anti-MLM hag queens the pigs of the industry who do nothing but openly attack the persona, the personalities, the emotional content that other people are putting out with zero value whatsoever. I think they are vile, vile women who show exactly why was toxic women shouldn't be involved in this industry. They should be given a wide berth. I'll triple down. I don't fucking apologize to them at all. Not one chance. No. So you don't believe in being the change you wish to see in the world, even though you admit that it's been helpful for me to do it for you. You won't do it. No, in that aspect of it, absolutely not. Not with those people. Why? What you do? That's no. That's 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 your guy's stuff. You know, when you when you've been actually kicked in the ass a ton of times, you learn that a snake is a snake. Those but, women. But are you snakes. said you hold me in Man, high respect. But hold no, on, Dom. You said you hold me in high yeah. respect because I partially because I apologized to you, and you said that was a very stand up move. So they have not apologized yet. Pa well, that's hold them. on. Well, hold on. So you yourself wouldn't apologize, even though you think it's a respectable trait in someone else. When when you came at me, did I? Did, how did I respond when you wound up? I don't remember uh, actually. I just blocked it. Right. So because I didn't respond when you called me a sixty-year-old steroid bloated uh, cocksucker incel who should suck your dick. How did how did I respond? Did I, I ever? Do I don't know. Comments? I blocked you. Right. So I didn't I didn't comment to you. I didn't respond to you. Right. Because there was no point for it. You didn't make any further content. You didn't. You the only place you attacked personally was behind the scenes. Every one of the people you're describing attack publicly. Why should I apologize to anybody who didn't attack me personally but does publicly? No, I'm not, I'm not going to extend an olive branch for any one of those people on there. It's your choice to associate with them. Good for you. But honestly, if every, every one of those women was at the level of changing this industry, none of them would have quit. They would have stayed in, and they wouldn't have abandoned their teams. Those women are just as bad as what you're describing, too. Because they all blew away every single person they built in their team, and they didn't go back to say, hey, let me fix it. They quit. They abandoned them, and they knew what the problem was, and they went right to social media to blaming everybody but themselves. Oh, Jesse Lee Ward, Ray Higdon, he's so mean. Joe, don't watch this video. It's going to trigger you. No, those are women who actually need a wake-up call. Because they're fundamental fucking women who are just so lazy. They're pigs. They're, they're, just, they're, they're the I get it, I get it. Okay, okay, okay. Not a chance in fucking hell, well, I apologize. Well, I'm glad I asked anyways. Uh, yeah, there's your answer. I'm going to be a, a gentlemanly uh, interviewer here and, and let you have the last word, so I'm not going to expand on that. So, um, yeah, thank you, Dom. I think it's I been I appreciate mostly, you. I think you're productive. doing a great job, and I, I appreciate all of your, your content and your your. Yeah, you're you're stand up you're stand up gent and you got what no whatever you choose to go through, you're gonna wind up with succeeding. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Have a good night. You too. I'll be back. I'll be right back. I gotta I'm gonna pee my pants.
All right, I'm back, y'all. Thank you guys uh, for sticking with me through that. Wow, man. I'm not a loser. Thanks, Marco. Obama. Ah, uh, man. I want to say, dude, I really appreciate you guys. Ah, uh, man. I'm going to do this. I saw this in the chat. I saw this in the chat. I saw this in the chat, and uh, I think it was actually a great idea, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to put this up on the screen. Um, somebody suggested somebody suggested that I do a dono goal called Therapy for Dom. And so I'm going to do it because I think... While I think the most of that was uh, decent, I will say um, some of the things he said, man, specifically about women and like the shit that he said at the end there where he tripled down on like the mean stuff he said, I really want to apologize on behalf of, not even on behalf of anyone. I want to apologize personally because I... Uh, have provided Dom tonight a platform to to spew that type of not nice language again. And that's I'm responsible for that. And my intention with this was to try to find common ground and, and uh, talk solutions. So I, I apologize for creating yet another piece of content where that type of rhetoric exists and effectively rebroadcasting that because I don't agree with that obviously and I don't think that you know if I had my way I, I wouldn't include that in a video willingly obviously but of course this is live so I just want to apologize for that in there because this is my channel and I am effectively responsible for everything that you see on this channel regardless of if it came out of somebody else's mouth or not so um you know, I, I look forward to, I mean, the chat was going so fast and I was focused on the conversation with him, but I, I'm excited to go back and read your guys' comments. I, I wonder if there's, you know, upon reflection, if there's anything that I could have done better, improved on, um, said different. I think I did a pretty good job. It was tough though. My, I had to pee. I haven't held my piss like that since I watched The Incredibles when I was 10 years old and I had to pee about halfway through the movie, but I held it because I didn't want to miss anything in the movie. And I think it did long-term damage to my bladder, to be honest with you, when that happened. But I want to thank all you guys. There's so many of you that dropped... Uh, maybe I should change the donor goal to detect super chats and not... Uh, and not... Streamlabs donations because it appears that you guys are using the super chat more than the than the Streamlabs. So perhaps I should do that. But uh, maybe it, maybe th maybe tonight isn't even the night for me to. Maybe tonight's not even the night for me to sort of dissect what happened. All I my immediate thoughts after that are, I I am not happy about that end bit there. I do think it was worth me bringing up the, you know asking him to apologize in the future or if he'd even be open to it. But, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I wouldn't have asked him that if I knew that that was what his response was going to be. So um, I hope, you know, I apologize to whoever's name he brought up and, and people bringing him in. So, um, yeah, am I, based on how this went, I don't know if I would want to be... I don't know if I would want to do a follow-up to this because I don't actually feel it was as productive as it could have and should have been. When when Dominic and I spoke briefly before we actually did this, one second. When Dominic and I spoke briefly before we actually did the final thing, I felt that it went pretty... I felt we had a productive conversation when it was in private. I felt that both of us were respectful and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. 
tonight, and maybe it was just, maybe it was because we were on the, uh, on the stream, you know, maybe it was because of that. This should register Super Chat now, which thank you guys. Maybe it was because we were on the stream, but I didn't feel that I got the same grace from Dominic tonight that uh, we had prior. It also wasn't as bad, though, as some of the as as I as I thought it might be. So, regardless, uh, I do have to respect the fact that he knows he's coming into a hostile envi hostile environment. He was willing to do it on my channel. He didn't insist that we did it on a on his channel where he had control and could have edited it up and changed the context. So I do respect that action of being willing to coming on my channel and having the conversation with me here when he knows that most of the people in my audience are against him. I respect that action. But when it comes to the, the person uh, and the personal sentiments and the personal attacks, I don't respect that. You know, a lot of times I hear uh, criticize the business, not the person, criticize the action, not the person. And if he had agreed to the pee break, I would have come back and responded to his question about Am I willing to put a disclosure up on my videos? There have been videos in the past where I did put a disclaimer, specifically my WFG part three video. I put a disclaimer that it's my opinion. I also usually say in my videos that like verbally that it is my opinion, that the videos are my opinion. And then I back up my opinion with why I feel that way and present the data, etc. What I was going to say to Dom was that I am not willing to you know, hold myself to the standard of putting a disclaimer in all of my videos, while it might be wise for me to do legally, and I may do it for that reason, I don't think I'm deceiving anyone. I, I, I resent the idea that I'm manipulating women who have been burned by the MLM industry by making videos talking about the industry, especially because I'm not qualified enough, and I'm not disclosing the fact that I'm not qualified. I disagree with all of that. This YouTube channel, my Patreon, the membership, the super chat, all the ways that you guys support me, which I appreciate so much because it's an, an amazing thing to be able to not only make money from being a YouTuber, but also knowing that that content isn't just mindless entertainment. It's actually educating people and helping people as well as entertaining them. That's a really amazing feeling. And it wouldn't obviously be a thing without you guys that click like and donate and Patreon and all that. Okay. That being said, I resent the idea that I am manipulating people because this is not some business opportunity that I'm, I mean, you guys already fucking, you guys, I know you understand this. I know you already get this. This is not some business opportunity I'm presenting to you guys saying, join my Patreon and you're going to make millions of dollars. And just like him and I talked about earlier in the, in the debate, a doctor is held to a higher standard of professionalism because it's life and death. Business and YouTube should not be held to the same standard because MLM business business is telling you is presenting you a business opportunity and potentially you're going to quit school, quit your job for it, put money into it. They should have to provide you disclosure. If you don't like a YouTube video that I put out, aside from the time that you spent watching it, deciding you don't like it, it didn't cost you nothing. So I don't think I need to disclose. Dang. Uh, so I, I, I apologize. I, I can't, I haven't been able to keep up with the chat. Um, I, again, I'm sure I'm going to look back on this, on, on the live chat tomorrow or whatever and read it and send some of you guys messages being like, LOL, this comment, or thank you for this comment. So yeah, man, I'm, I'm still glad I did it. Yeah, Lucid Enemy here, I see this one. Marco told me I was going to be a millionaire by watching his videos in six months. It's been one year, and I am a multi-millionaire. Subscribe for millionaire. A absolutely, you guys. Subscribe for financial freedom. Marco. I got you. Marco. Um, so, you know, hope, I mean, hey, that went about as productively as all of my other anti-MLM versus MLM debates. I generally find that people in the industry will deflect. You know, there's gaslight, gatekeep, girl boss. There's what manipulate, mansplain, man. I forget. Um, 
you know, it really, it really wasn't cool to me that he kept going on about gender and women and whatever. Ah, man, so much to uh, unpack. But what I was saying was, I find it usually goes that way. If you remember, I did a couple debates in 2021 that also were really great. I mean, there was one that over 2,000 people were watching live. That's fucking amazing. And in those, they often ended up with deflecting, personal attacks, questioning the, the, my credibility. These are all... These are all consistent with like the bite model cult tactics. Discredit the source of information, uh, whether that's by attacking them personally or suggesting that they didn't have enough experience, et cetera, et cetera. And I can handle it. You know, I, I think that I responded pretty eloquently to a lot of the things he said. I just, unfortunately, if the person that I'm talking to is not going to directly address the things that I'm saying and they answer questions with questions or they answer my question by bringing a comparison that doesn't actually equate and it's a false equivalence, we're not going to get very far. So on my list, I had some of the points to discuss, which was uh, things you dislike about the industry. I think we it was good to start with common ground. I wrote down 99% loss rate. We didn't really get to that. But one of the things I wanted to clarify about the 99% loss rate is people often misunderstand this statistic. The 99% loss rate in MLM is actually very generous on the part of MLMs. 99% of people in MLM lose money each year. So let's ver let, let me just describe this to you. I'll keep it very simple. I'm mansplaining. Let's say there's 100 people in an MLM. We can infer because of the stats, 99 of those people are losing money and the one guy at the top is making money. On year two, most of those 99 people who lost money will leave and be replaced by, let's say, a new 99, okay? So on year two, again, one person makes money, 99 people have lost money. But if you look at the two, the two years that they've been in business and how many people have lost and how many people have gained, 198 people, 99 from the first year plus 99 from the second year have lost money and the guy at the top is still the same guy at the top. So now you see how the 99% loss rate when extrapolated over two years is actually a lot worse. And over the course of five years, if these variables stayed consistent, 495 people would have lost money and one person would have made money. And I think that conversion to percentage is 0.0002% in a five-year span. Now think about how some of these companies have been around since like the 70s. And imagine the toll of people, the churn rate, the losses. People often refer to Bernie Madoff's Ponzi scheme, which was $64 billion of losses, as the worst financial white-collar crime in history. Multi-level marketing, the industry generates, I think it's $32 billion, so half of that, every single year. And it's been proven that the profits the industry reports are synonymous with the losses of 99% of people in the company. So we have in every calendar year, a fraud half as big as Bernie Madoff being perpetuated for decades. In my opinion, multi-level marketing is the longest standing, most widespread, most harmful, with the most victims level fraud that has ever existed in human history. And I can qualify that. I recommend you read Ponzi Nomics. I, recognize, uh, I recommend you read Combating Cult Mind Control. I recommend you read the book Freedom of Mind. And going forward on this channel, I am going to have Dr. Steve Hassan on the show, author of Freedom of Mind, Combating Cult Mind Control. I've already had Robert Fitzpatrick on a video on my channel. That one's really informative. I highly recommend you watch that. I'm going to have him on again and he's, as he's putting out a new book this month about the fallacy of direct sales and sort of the idea that I was trying to talk to Dominic about, uh, which was with the blockbuster analogy. You know, Blockbuster was phased out because people chose the convenience of Netflix. 
direct sale direct selling was phased out because of Walmart, Target, Amazon, etc. Even Walmart, well Walmart and Target would have phased out direct selling because it was more easy, it was more accessible to go to Walmart and Target than to buy from the vacuum salesman going door to door. And now even Walmart and Target are at risk because of, of how successful Amazon is and you know, you see Amazon opening up grocery stores now too. So uh, I'm going to have Robert Fitzpatrick on again. And next month, I will be speaking as a panelist on the uh, multi-level marketing conference. It's not pro multi-level marketing. I think it's just called multi-level marketing conference. The past two years, it's been virtual because of COVID. This year, I really would like to go to uh, Washington in person, be able to directly address members of the FTC and some of the academics that are going to be speaking and viewing that, as well as just the global audience that that might reach. Um, hopefully I can do it in person. We'll see what the YouTube revenue says, but you know, thus far, we're not at that billions and billions yet. Billions and billions. We'll get there hopefully. So, uh, you're hilarious. Recommending books, but you're not an expert. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I'm not going to keep you guys anymore and I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to go out with a bang and not keep this, uh, live fizzling out. So appreciate you guys. Don't do drugs. Don't join an MLM. Uh, subscribe, click like on this, uh, Patreon in the description, blah, blah, blah. Multi-level misery, new episodes coming out. Thank you all for being here. And Instagram, that's where I post most of my updates at always Marco, always Marco everywhere. TikTok. Instagram, YouTube. So, you know, hopefully we can do more of these debates in the future. With Dominic, I don't know, but with somebody. All right, y'all. Appreciate it. Marco. We did it. Marco. We'll be back Wednesday, I believe. Or who knows, maybe earlier. I don't know. <laughs>